Alongside Jerry Massey, I'm Rick Watson. Welcome back to Bill Brown Stadium. It's Blacksburg and Hidden Valley here tonight. The Bruins will receive the opening kickoff. Hidden Valley won the toss. They deferred to the second half. They want to get this Blacksburg offense down the field and set, set the tone with their defense. That's what Coach Edwards likes to do. Some game keys tonight, Jerry, obviously for Blacksburg. It would be nice if they could establish a running game, something they've really struggled since the loss of Josh Sales. You don't lose a guy who's rushing for over 130 yards a game and expect to just plug somebody in. But I think tonight with Robert Jennings coming back, he's a little healthier. He did not play a week ago at fullback. Sean Bennett will get the start. Maybe some bigger holes for Matt Woods. You know, Joe Turley's also a tailback. We'll see if he gets any action back there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, if he's at a full 100%. Of course, the senior coming back from the big injury there. But I think, you know, another thing for Blacksburg, Rick, is that they must take advantage of good field position. We saw it so many times last week where Blacksburg was inside the Pulaski County 35, even three times inside the red zone, and were unable to come away with any points. Of course, there were two missed field goals uh, there. So we've seen it back-to-back -back weeks where even the big play has cost Blacksburg in momentum. We saw it two weeks ago where there was a muffed uh, uh, punt, and then last week we saw uh, some uh, questionable coverage on a, uh, on a pass flow there, which led to a Pul uh, Pulaski County touchdown. So several factors going into tonight's game, but I think if Blacksburg can control the ball offensively and eat up some time off the clock like they did in a five-and-a-half-minute drive last week late in the game against Pulaski County, they may have some success. And, of course, uh, not turning the football over would be nice. Uh, two crucial fumbles last week really hurt the calls. The Bruins have to take advantage, as Jerry mentioned. you got to score a touchdown when you get inside the 10-yard line. No more field goal attempts. We found out that Will Matthews, the place kicker, is battling a foot injury, so we'll see that affects him on offense tonight. So, again, the Bruins trying to deal these injuries as they come, and they have come in hard so far here in 2004 with all these seniors that are falling, so the kids will be playing very hard, as they always do. That's why you still have a lot of fun watching these guys because they leave everything out on the field. For Hidden Valley, Coach Edwards told me, look, we want to be balanced, and we don't really know. He wouldn't fess up. He was nice about it, but wouldn't really talk about what they're going to come out, what kind of look they're going to come out in offensively. Again, Jerry, we covered it, though. They can run the spread. They like the spread. They like to also run the eye. They do different things. And, again, with Judd Cart out, their leading receiver, it's going to be interesting to see how their offensive philosophy may shift here tonight from Bill Brown. Yeah, see if they come up with an extra uh, key player. You know, maybe Greg Matthews will be more involved in the offense, catching passes from the end position, the big six-foot target, uh, the junior. But, uh, you know, running the football, I think Jimmy King will see some more touches tonight for Hidden Valley. Also, Alex Ray will continue to run the football. So I think running the game, uh, running uh, for Hidden Valley, well, they'll get over 100 yards per game as uh, they've been averaging the, the entire season. But passing the football, well, uh, big weapon is out. So a uh, chance for some other players to step up and shine. Bruins will be wearing the home royal blue jerseys with the gold numbers, the white pants again for the second straight week. Two royal blue stripes down each side, the royal blue helmet with the gold face mask and gold single stripe down the middle. Hidden Valley wears road white jerseys, navy blue pants and numbers with gold trim, and we are underway here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium, and the kick's going to be taken by Gregory at the 10 to the 15-20. Straight up the field, 25-30, found a seam. It quickly closes, however. Nice open field tackle by the freshman Corey Sloan, 5'8", 144 pounds. Not a bad return, though, of 16 yards on the play by Gregory. First and 10 for the Bruins. They're going to spot it, it looks like, at the 29. Pretty good field position. Not a bad return like you mentioned, Rick. And we'll see if Blacksburg comes out like they did during the early parts of last, week game, uh, last week's game. Daniel Smith very patient in the pocket. You can tell a world of difference from when he reentered uh, the starting position from John Cook, who had filled in for him. See if he can roll out, see if he can go through his reads, and, and, and see if Blacksburg can get some big plays early on. From right to left, the Bruins will work against this five-man front. They also run a four-man front, Hidden Valley. Two receivers to the right, an eye formation. It's going to be the late handoff to Woods. Cuts it back through the middle. He's got 10, 15, and there he goes. He's at the 40, 35, 30, off to the races, 20, 10. He's going to have a touchdown. There are no flags. Officially 70 yards, and Matt Woods, just like that, makes sure the running game gets off to a good start. It's 6-0 Blacksburg. Well, Rick, so much for Daniel Smith rolling out and attempting a pass. Just a straight-up-the-gut dive, a simple play that you learn during the first week of practice, and Woods made tacklers miss. And Hidden Valley, they were not too extremely close to the line. They came with a five-man front, two linebackers, two safeties, and also two corners. Nothing special on defense, and Woods just got back into the secondary and outraced the Titans' defense for the score. 
Now the extra point attempt by Will Matthews to stake the Bruins to an early 7-0 lead. Out of the hole to Daniel Smith. Kick is down. It is up. And it is no good. He missed it to the left. And that's going to be a problem tonight. Again, Will having some foot problems, which we talked about. Well, good start nonetheless. 6-0 Bruins on the wood. 70-yard touchdown gallop. We'll take a break. We'll come back for the kick. You're in tune to Bruins football here on Super Talk 101. That's what Benny says. How come you never get me coffee? He did not. Why'd you want to say something? You heard this one. So I said, I'm going to turn around at you. You don't need coffee. Barbara, what was that all about? What do you mean? The thing with your bag and the kid. Oh, that's it's just a natural reaction. Not to me, it isn't. Imagine the power of one voice. Click freedomcenter.org to find yours. Electrifying start for the Bruins. Took 18 seconds, one play, 70 yards. And it is 6-0. Again, the Matthews PAT was no good. He'll try to boot it back now to Hidden Valley from right to left. And Will puts his toe through it. A low line dry. Looks like it might head out of bounds. No, it's going to get the back of the end zone. So a good kick there by Matthews. That means that Hidden Valley will bring it out. Their first offensive possession from the 20-yard line, and I'll tell you what, Coach Edwards has to be a little bit shell-shocked by that start by the Bruins. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right, especially getting a long touchdown uh, play such as that. Probably the Bruins, uh, one of the, uh, the longer offensive plays on the season, and a big boost for the team as well. What kind of confidence will this give Blacksburg early on in the game? Remember, they've got their hearts broken the last two weeks with miscues. Uh, on special teams and on defense, and this gives them a little something to, to work with. They're going to split two receivers to the right side of the field. That is the near side for us. Out of the I formation, they hand it off to the tailback, and he's a good one, Jimmy King, who runs ahead for a couple of yards, make it three out to the 23-yard line before Ray Williams put him down. King for the year, 467 yards, averaging nearly six yards per carry, second out and seven. Just straight up the gut there for Hidden Valley. First offensive play, big hit. Brings the man down, second and seven. How much Flincham going to replace, of course, Herbie Hype for the rest of the year, at least starting out games on this four-man front for the Bruins. They've been playing a five-man front, and it looks like they're going to come out now this time and have five men at the line of scrimmage once again. Two receivers this time out to the left side of the field for Tyler Coyer, the very talented junior quarterback. They send Alex Ray, the fullback, in motion. They throw it out to Goins. He's replacing Cardi. Catches far sideline, and he's near a first down as he's tackled ahead to just about where he had to get at the 30. Tackle was made across the way that time. I believe it was Grant Duncan, number 27, and I think it is going to be enough yardage for a first down. I mean, they might bring the sticks across. Well, they got to the 30-yard line. That's where the ball is resting. Well, they're going to bring it in. The near side football is marked at the 30. The far side football is marked just shy of the 30. Well, Coyer, as you mentioned, 50% completions. He's thrown for 10 touchdowns, 732 yards. And it looks like they're going to mark him just short. Well, it's going to be a first down. Now they're going to bring the change across. I think we had a tangle problem again. Remember last week, the very first play, the chains were tangled up. First down at the 30-yard line. So two receivers will be coming to the near side. That'll be B.J. Mahaso in the slot. The wide man will be that tight end, Greg Matthews. Jerry mentioned he might be more active. And sure enough, he's split out wide as a receiver. Eye formation again. They're going to send the tailback king in motion to the near side of the field. They're going to hand it off to Ray. The talented fullback's got 10. He's got 15. Man, just hard running out to the 46-yard line, a 16-yard run. And your secondary making the tackle there. You know it's going to be a problem when you're calling out the name of Grant Duncan and Stuart Worley. And, again, Alex Ray started last year as a freshman, Jerry, and he's a good one on both sides. Yeah, very good. Can run the football, get several yards, especially after the initial hit. But you see how wide Hidden Valley is spreading out their skill players. That causes trouble for Blacksburg because they have to go out and cover those players, but they still have to respect the run, especially between the hashes. 10.20 to go. Turning first quarter clock, and this is King, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. That was a big hit by Jared Walters, who came in to put him down. Matt Woods helped finish him off. Going to be a loss of a yard on the play back to the 45. Second down and 11, forthcoming. Another dive play straight up the gut. Got to give credit to the interior defensive lineman there for Blacksburg, just preventing them from running the football, getting several yards on the play. A little bit better uh, defensive containment compared to the other play, which... Ray ran for 16 yards on. Mahalso out to the left. 
Wears his hair in a ponytail that hangs out of the back of his helmet. Eye formation with Ray and King. Looks like two tight ends this time for the Titans. Down six to nothing after the 70-yard gallop by Woods. Play action rolling to his left. This is Coyer. He's going to tuck it under and run. He's across midfield and gets it to about the 49. It's going to be a gain on the play of just about four yards. So Hidden Valley looking at third down. We'll call it a long six. He had man coverage on the far side there, Rick, and the, the receiver just ran a go route. Coyer just uh, looked like he just took one look at that receiver. That was the only man that went down the field and decided to keep it and was able to get some positive yardage there for Hidden Valley. Huge play here for the Bruins. You know, if you can stop them right here and get that offense back out onto the field, it'd be a huge play. Split to the right. It's going to be Goins. And they're going to put two tight ends out once again. Backs are in the eye for third and six. King goes in motion to the right. And it's going to be a handoff to Ray straight up the middle, and he won't get there. As a matter of fact, he won't gain a yard. Walters again hit him first. Matt Drumheller. Put him to the turf, and again, that time Blacksburg looked like they were expecting the fullback play. Yes, they were, especially with two men coming out wide, and you had Sims on inside man coverage to the near side, but Blacksburg, they could have been very easily misled into thinking it was going to be a rollout or pass to the near side, but great containment once again. Walters and, and uh, Drumheller, you know, keeping containment. Flag is thrown as Alex Ray retreated back to his 39-yard line to boot it to the Bruins and I think we had procedure against Hidden Valley. You're going to have Clemens back deep and Tyler Holmes the very talented freshman flanking him about 15, 20 yards up the field. It's going to be illegal substitution. Five yard penalty. Same result. First flag of the game so far I believe. Three minutes gone by. Six nothing Bruins. 70 yard touchdown run by Matt Woods to start the game. Now Ray will be back at his 32-yard line, and he gets the punt out of there, kicks it away from Plemons, who looks to retrieve it. And it's going to take a sideways hop and be down at about the 18-yard line. So a good kick there by Alex Ray, no return whatsoever by Tim Plemons. So now here comes Daniel Smith in this Blacksburg offense. They didn't have to work too hard. That's the first possession, one play, six points, and they haven't been able to say that a whole lot since Josh Sales was lost due to a leg injury. Yeah, and uh, Blacksburg just, just really needed a big play like that. Haven't had anything going for them in the past several games, of course, six-game losing streak with Matt Woods getting his team some momentum. And I want to talk a little bit about that funny hop there on the, uh, on the punt. Very slick out there tonight because of the rain we had earlier in the day. Could be a factor later on tonight in special teams. Smith brings him out for the second possession for the Bruins. Two receivers out to the right side. Again, Plemons in the slot. Matthews wide, and it's the fullback up the middle. Nothing to him. Sean Bennett couldn't get going at all. There was about five white jerseys there, led by Kyle Black, 5'11", senior, up front, defensive tackle, second down and 10. Yeah, Blacksburg just tried to run the same play that they did with Woods, but just with a, uh, a different uh, player there. Straight up the gut, Hidden Valley defensively. Nice job. Cuts, that. that cuts that rushing average in half. Well, yes, it does. One carry for 70 yards, now two for 35 after the no-gainer. Clemens will be out to the right. Eye formation once again. The ball is on the near hash mark on the left side. Smith brings him set, two tight end formation. Seven men along the line of scrimmage for Hidden Valley, and here's Woods, and they were keying on him, but he bounces off the initial hit and does a great job of just falling ahead for about four yards when he could have lost three. Tackle was finally made by Matt Greenway, one of their fine linebackers. They have a nice duo of backers. We were talking with Coach Phipps before the game. He's very impressed with Alex Ray and also this Matt Greenway kid. Yeah, they'll definitely come up and hit you in the mouth, Rick. Very, very aggressive from that uh, linebacker position. Also, on that play, you had Woods, who could have easily gone down in the backfield, but was able to get some positive yardage with some second and third efforts. High formation out to the right will be Plemons. Gregory, your tailback now. Bennett will be your fullback. Smith, three-step drops, going to fire it far side, and Plemons can't make an over-the-shoulder grab with the left hand. Incomplete the first toss of the night by the quarterback. Smith's going to bring up a fourth down. So Blacksburg had a nice run by Woods after the initial contact, and they're going to be about five yards shy, and retreating back deep will be the very dangerous Jimmy King. couple touchdown returns on kicks this season. Flincham will go back to his 10. Talmadge Flincham, who's done a good job replacing Josh Sales 
with all the punting chores. Of course, you lose Josh. You lost about five positions on the football field. Flincham awaits the snap. 7.15 to go. 6 nothing Bruins. And it's a high, booming spiral. King's going to call for a fair catch and have it at the 37-yard line. That was a curious play to call for a fair catch there, but a great kick by Talmadge. 39 yards on the punt, Rick. Not too bad. He's definitely come to play since he's been called up to do the punting duties for the Blacksburg Bruins. 6 nothing Blacksburg. It was a 70-yard gallop to start the game by Matt Woods, and that's where we stand right now, Hidden Valley. Will begin their second possession offensively. Behind the junior quarterback, Tyler Coyer, six feet, 194 pounds. We're gonna have an eye formation, and Matt Greenway, linebacker, will be the fullback. King, your tailback, two receivers out to the left. Now, King goes in motion that way. Two-step drop, he throws it out in the flat on the far side. King catches, runs up the field, near the first down at the 48-yard line. It's gonna depend upon the spot, but I think he got it as he was finally shoved out of bounds across the way by Grant Sims. It's a nice uh, just flare out in the backfield for Hidden Valley. Just got it over to King and let him make his magic. And, yes, that is good enough for the first down. Third first down of the night for the Hidden Valley Titans. Such a large part of this Hidden Valley offense has been taken away with Judd Cart not in the equation. 26 catches, a couple touchdowns. But Jerry mentioned it's the yardage that really stands out, 336 yards. So you have to be creative, and that's throw it out in the flat more. Let your backs, your other talented runner, King get involved as they did there. First down from the 48, King takes the handoff and he's going to fight ahead for about three to the Blacksburg 49. It was Woods there first along with Drumheller, Nick Green. Actually, it's going to be a two-yard gain as they bring it back a little bit. Second down and eight coming up. King with 15 yards rushing on the night, four carries. That's Hidden Valley. It's the ball past midfield. And Blacksburg between the tackles, not bad so far. I mean, they've only allowed a couple of runs that have been substantial. Of course, Ray had a big run and King had one. But other than that, they've done very well keeping an eye on their reads. Receiver to each side of the field. And for the first time, we'll see it a lot. Coyer in the shotgun. Takes the snap from his 45. Fires it. King is wide open. And he can't make a diving grab at the 25. He had gotten behind the coverage and right in front of the cornerbacks. And he was open, clear and free at the 25. Coyer just let him a little too much. It's going to be third down, but that was a nice play call by Hidden Valley. Yeah, if Coyer hits King, then King has already scored six points. And King split the difference between the corner and the free safety and just got out there in the flat and just uh, too much touch on the pass there by the junior in Tyler Coyer. Third down and a long seven here. Good situation for the Blacksburg defense potentially. Chris Leonard out to the left. Mahasa to the near side. Once again out of the shotgun for the Titans. Coyer calls back the signals, and he's going to take it and run it, and it was a planned run, and it didn't fool Joe Turley back in there after missing a few games when he hurt his knee against Northside. It's going to be a loss of a couple, and it's going to be fourth down at nine as Turley was just kind of hawking the quarterback, Coyer, on that play. What an open field tackle there by Turley, looking like Xavier DB from last night. Just taking the man on one-on-one, -on -one, and he just goes for his legs, and he takes him out. Alex Ray. He'll go back for his second punt attempt, this time from his 36. Once again, it's Clemens back deep, and it's going to be a fake. They snap it to King, and he's going to have the first down at the 40. He's still on his feet, fumbles the football, and the Bruins have it. It's recovered by Grant Duncan at the 34, and King is hurt. He is holding his left knee. He took a wicked hit. The ball came rolling out. Grant Duncan jumped all over it. And after a great play call by Coach Edwards to get the first down and a great effort by King, he loses the football. And more importantly, it looks like Hidden Valley has lost King. We can't really tell, but it looks like he's in a lot of pain here next to the Blacksburg sideline. Well, Rick, hate to speculate, but, you know, he was trying to get those, those extra yards after he had picked up the first down. And once he leapt over the Blacksburg defender, he landed on his leg wrong. And then he went, he fumbled the football, and then he went down. Well, they're going to have to get somebody over here immediately, and this is uh, a nasty-looking injury we have here at the 35-yard line. And, boy, we've seen this a whole lot this year. It's really involved, uh, more often than not, the royal blue and gold. But we have another, looks like, substantial injury here at Bill Brown. We're going to take a break. We'll come back, 538 in the quarter, 6-0 Bruins. 
You're listening to Blacksburg Football here on Super Talk 101. No one looks back fondly on the years they spent in a parking garage. When we lose a historic place, we lose a part of who we are. Help protect historic places in your community. Visit nationaltrust.org. Welcome back to Bill Brown Stadium. Kind of a subdued atmosphere now as King's leaving the field, putting no weight at all on his left leg. And he's being helped off by a couple of the Hidden Valley coaches. Again, they're leading rusher. They've already lost Cart for the year, the separated shoulder, and now King is out. Looks like a severe knee injury. We won't speculate on it, but we've seen that before. I saw Josh Sales go out the same way, and Herbie Hypes last week, and I doubt we see Mr. King any more here tonight from Bill Brown. First down for the Bruins. From right to left, they work at the 34-yard line. I formation, you're going to hand it off to Gregory, trying to get the corner, and he got turned inside. The ball comes out. It's loose still, and I think Hidden Valley got it at the 35. Hidden Valley recovers the football. Gregory again, back-to-back -back plays where a running back, Jerry, just trying to make something else happen with the football. They don't protect it. They get hit when they're not expecting it from the blind side, and the ball came rolling out right into the hands of, I believe, Greg Matthews, who recovered it. Well, Rick, there was a, a lot of traffic over in that area of the football field. Gregory was just trying to, to, to make something happen in an area where he should have just went down and have taken a, a no gain on the play, but back-to-back -back turnovers. It was an opportunity for Blacksburg to take advantage of a miscue by another team uh, You know, for once this uh, in this later part of the season, but Hidden Valley regains possession. Now the Titans from left to right, a golden opportunity. Two receivers to the right side, and they're going to hand it off to the new tailback who's going to switch from fullback, and that's going to be Matt Greenway, and he motors ahead for about eight yards from the 34 to the 26. Drumheller and Holmes combined to make the tackle, but it's an eight-yard push up the field by the new tailback for Hidden Valley, Matt Greenway. And will Greenway be now part of this backfield almost by committee for Hidden Valley now? Because they are a patchwork team behind quarterbacks. Of course, Cart not in, and now King not in. So uh, <laughs> Hidden Valley's going to have to go to some several athletes down the depth chart in order to make things happen for them. Mahalso, the sole receiver to the right. I formation. Coyer, play action, is going to roll that way. Now he's going to throw it to his big tight end here on the near, near side, and he's got it. Nice tackle in the open field by Grant Sims. Brian Bush made the catch, but it is going to be a first down to the 20, a six-yard pickup. So that was a nice play-action fake by the junior quarterback. A good tackle by Sims, but that play accomplished everything Hidden Valley wanted it to. And now, look at that. You've got your tight end Bush limping back to the hook. Yes, he is. Very slow getting back there. You send the wide receiver on the near side down the field on a go, right, uh, go route, but you bring in the uh, the – Bush underneath and just a simple rollout pass and picks up Hidden Valley's fourth first down of the game. 6 nothing Blacksburg, a 70-yard. Matt Woods gallop to start the game. 4.20 to go in the first. Full house backfield. This time for Hidden Valley from the Berg 19. They're going to hand it off over the right side to Greenway. Jared Walters will tackle him ahead for about three yards. Flags are down, though, at the end of the play. We'll see what this is all about. And the Blacksburg players are saying that it's a holding call against Hidden Valley, and that is indeed the case. Now to go 10 yards from the previous spot. That's where the flag was thrown anyway, so it'll be first and 20 for the Hidden Valley Titans as the Titans were able to move the football down just a little bit more just outside the 15, but now they're going to have a lot more field position to make up. It's going to take the football back to the 29. Hidden Valley trying to get on the scoreboard for the first time. A split backfield, Greenway and Ray. Mahasso split to the left. Ball's on the far right hash mark. Rolling to his left, the quarterback, Coy. Is he going to turn it up or is he going to throw? He's going to pump. He's going to loft his pass far side. Bush made a great one-handed grab. They're going to say he was out of bounds at the 13. Terrific effort by the big tight end. It's going to bring up a second down and 20, but not for a lack of effort. Just lobbed it up there. Big six-foot Brian Bush unable to come down inbounds, but you got to like the effort. 
for the junior end. Also the touch for Coyer, but if he takes just a little bit off of it, then Bush doesn't have to leap for the football, and therefore he can concentrate a little bit more about staying in bounds for the catch. Second down and 20. The ball's back at the 28-yard line. Blacksburg trying to urge the crowd on. This crowd really not really very vocal here tonight. I think the Bruins are picking up on that. Nick Green was urging them on a little bit. Twin receivers out to the left. It's the big tight end Matthew split wide. Goins in the slot. I formation, play action again. They're going to throw it out and nobody home. It looked like the receiver that time, Goins, was going to run to the end zone, and I think Coyer thought he was going to cut it back out on a little out route. Didn't happen, and now it's third down and 20. Definitely some miscommunication there, and, you know, Coyer did have the depth to be able to throw the football, but uh, if the receiver cuts it out like Coyer believed that he would do so, then he connects. But nonetheless, third and long now for Hidden Valley, and you have to think, Rick, that this would be four down territory for the Titans. 344 to go. Coyer brings them set. They're going to work out of the eye formation. They're going to hand it off. Oh, mix up in the backfield. Greenway's going to bounce off of the initial contact and take it ahead for about two yards to the 25-yard line. A gain of three officially, so it's going to be fourth down as it was Nick Green and Jared Walters in on the stop. And Greenway, 14 yards on the evening, three carries. So you have Greenway with 14. King unofficially with 30. But remember, he's out of the game on five carries. And Alex Ray, after some very after one very nice carry to start off one of their early drives for Hidden Valley, he hasn't seen many carries. He's only had two on the night for 17 yards. Fourth down, they're going to forego the field goal. Kyle Curbo, pretty good. Offset eye formation. Rolling to his left corner. Now he stands, fires, middle of the field. It's tipped and intercepted by Stuart Worley at the 10. Worley on the tip drill, picked it off, and Blacksburg holds on fourth down. It's one of those plays where you don't fault the kid, but that ball, if he just knocks it down, you have the football at the 25 instead of back at your own 10. Again, it's tough to think about that when you see the ball coming to your arm, but still, good job by the Bruins defense on fourth down. 15-yard difference in catching that football or knocking it down on fourth down, but nonetheless, you got to like the effort. Turnover fest tonight, Rick. You have two turnovers by Hidden Valley, one by Blacksburg, and we've not even played 10 minutes of this contest. 6 0 Blacksburg, 2.54 to go. Now trips out to the right. Three receivers for the Bruins. They're going to hand it off to Bennett. They spread him out and they hit him with the trap play, and Bennett's rumbling ahead for 10 yards. Across the 21 to the 23 yard line, a gain of 12 on first down for the sophomore, Sean Bennett. You know, Coach has been doing that a lot, especially since Josh Shell's been out. You spread out that defense, and there's not that many people in the middle of the field to stop the run if they can break containment. Well, Hidden Valley used to running that offense themselves, so Blacksburg seeing something on tape, and they're going to say, hey, we're going to try it as well. Four defensive linemen down, and they were spread out tackle to tackle. You know what that means, Rick? Lots of room to run, especially if you're a running back. And what happens? First down for the Bruins. From right to left, the Bruins work. Two receivers out in the pattern this time. In the slot, Plibbins. Matthews will be wide. And look at this, Smith in the shotgun from his 17-yard line. Takes the snap, rolls to his right. He's looking to go deep to Plibbins. Instead, throws underneath the Matthews, who caught it at the line of scrimmage. And he was wrestled to the turf on the far sideline. I believe that was Alex Ray who put him down. Gain of maybe a yard. We'll say no gain, they say. Second down and 10. Hidden Valley, last two plays, they are rushing four and they are dropping seven. But, you know, four of those seven that they're dropping are just hanging around in no man's land, right in the middle linebacker uh, position. So an opportunity for Blacksburg, if they could just figure out how to exploit the Hidden Valley defense, they have opportunities, once in underneath, uh, one in underneath coverage and the other between the safeties and the linebackers. High formation, second down and 10. A handoff will go to Woods, and he's going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to get out of an initial hit, but then fall ahead for only a couple. Again, it was Matthews up front. Also in on the play, James Hainsworth. Third down and seven after the three-yard pickup by Woods. A minute 28 to go. An important play here. Blacksburg would like to move the sticks once again and get the ball from deep in their own territory. As Jerry mentioned, battlefield position has been lost by the Bruins so badly during this six-game losing streak. Here's a chance. Wide side of the field is the far side. An opportunity for Smith. He has two receivers out there. Out of the eye. Those two receivers will be to the right side of the field. 
Smith takes the snap, five-step drop. He's cut off, now stands, fires far sideline. Wide opens Matthews, first down across the 40. To the 43 before he's pushed out of bounds by Goins. A pickup of 17, and that was a laser fired on the far side by Daniel Smith. It was a gun. He stepped back, and then he stepped up into the pocket, saw his receiver. And, you know, last couple of games, Rick, Blacksburg has done a nice job of the receiving court finding themselves in open position. And if they are covered, they do a nice job of coming back and finding themselves open. Guys who, again, aren't going to beat you with their speed, but they are precise route runners. And they know where they have to get for first downs on third, and that's what we saw right there by Matthews. Out of the eye, they will work. 40 ticks remaining in the opening quarter. Flemons out to the right, sole receiver. Ball's on the right hash mark, and they're going to hand it off again. The trap play at the fullback, Bennett. He did this a lot last week against Pulaski. He just kept going near midfield. They're going to spot him down at the 49. It's going to be a gain of seven. He was tackled ahead on the play by Matt Greenway, but... Boy, Bennett really likes running in that little compact area, doesn't he? Yes, because it's a quick hitch, quick handoff. Doesn't give the, the lineman of the, the opposing team an opportunity to react. And before you know it, he's past the line and into the area where the linebackers are. That's going to be the final play of the opening quarter here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium. And a nice change. Blacksburg with the lead after the opening quarter of play here tonight. 6 nothing Bruins. We're back with more after this. You're listening to Blacksburg Bruins Football. Hello there. Having a lasting effect on a kid's life can be quick and easy. Here's some stuff we've learned. From time to time, secret codes may be used. It's not uncommon for a kid to demonstrate special powers. Costumes can be uncomfortable, but loads of fun. Moments like these happen every day. Lend your support. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org. That's all for now. Welcome back to Bill Brown Stadium here in Blacksburg. Second quarter action set to begin with the Bruins leading it from uh, by a score of 6-0 from the 49-yard line. They'll now switch ins, go from left to right here across the radio. I formation, Plemons to the right, three-step drop, and the pass thrown too far out of the reach of the wide receiver who would have had a first down at the 45. Looked like Smith may have rushed his toss that time. Third down and three. Smith now 2 of 4 on the evening, 18 yards. In the first quarter, Sean Bennett, three carries for 20. Matt Woods, three carries for 76 and a touchdown. Kevin Ger uh, Gregory, one carry for one, but he fumbled that carry. And Will Matthews, two receptions for 18 yards. Three first downs in the first quarter for the Blacksburg Bruins. And a bad injury to a Hidden Valley player, Jimmy King, their leading running back, hurt his knee. And uh, I doubt we'll see him the rest of the game. We'll try to get an update if we can at halftime. Eye formation, third and short yardage, and it's Bennett, and they were waiting on him, and that's a good play by the Hidden Valley front four. Who was there first? The freshman, they like him, Corey Sloan. You know, they started a freshman linebacker last year, Alex Ray. He's now a sophomore. He was in on the tackle. If anything, that lost a yard, and it's fourth down in a punting situation for Talmadge Flincham in the Bruins. And Hidden Valley on that play walked the linebacker up to make him look like a defensive end on the far side, made it look like a six-man uh, front uh, for the Titans, but Blacksburg runs away from it. Titans still successful in stopping that third down attempt. Goins back at the 12 to receive the Flincham kick. And again, Talmadge has done a good job. There's the snap, takes his two steps, and he got under this one a little bit. It's going to be high, and it's going to take a nice bounce for Blacksburg. Very high inside the 20 toward the 10. It's still bounding around and will be tackled or tapped up at about the nine-yard line. And that's, again, a terrific roll by Flincham, who was probably told to keep it out of the end zone, so he decided to put it way high that time. 42 yards on the kick. Man. Talmadge. He's been solid. Watch him in practice. He's just this happy-go-lucky kid. He's been, you know, told he has to go out and now start and place a Herbie Hypes on the defensive line. And you know what? If he's a kid that can just stay motivated, he's got another year left. He can be a fine football player in this program. And I think the Bruins have found their punter for the near future. you're right. Now the Titans' first possession here in the second quarter, 11.06 to go, down 6 nothing. They're going to have a full house backfield. That's three running backs behind Tyler Coyer. 5-2 uh, formation by the Bruins on defense. And there's just some tight running. I believe that was Alex Ray on the right side. Carries for two. 12-yard line. Nick Green was there along with Matt Woods. Second down and eight for the Hidden Valley Titans. Hidden Valley just trying to create some space. Pinned back in their own territory. Starting out this drive on the 10-yard line. Have to get it out somehow, and you don't want to risk getting it out and, and uh, having Coyer maybe roll out 
maybe force a bad pass and whatnot deep down in their own in their, uh, territory. Full house backfield once again. Ball directly in the middle of the field. Coyer takes the snap, rolls to the right. He's going to turn it up. He's got the corner. He's going to lower his head and be knocked down at about the 17, maybe the 18. Gain on the play of five. So it's going to be third and a very long two, I believe. So the Bruins, who spread that play out nicely, Jared Walters is all over the field here tonight, made a big hit on the Hidden Valley quarterback, Tyler Coyer. And Walters did a nice job finding the angle and running toward the quarterback, dragging him down before Coyer was able to pick up the first down. And you see Coyer very quick to make a decision whether he's going to stand back and get rid of the football or run it. So Blacksburg, one thing they're going to have to watch out during the later stages of this football game is, is Coyer and what he's going to decide to do behind center. From right to left, big third down play coming up. Full house set once again. Bruins coming after him. Looks like the ball was fumbled at the snap. It was, and it's going to be recovered by Hidden Valley, but the Bruins will hold. Nope, they're going to say Blacksburg picked it up. The Bruins get a huge opportunity at the 17-yard line. And, Jerry, I believe that's the third turnover for Hidden Valley. Is that correct? Yeah, two fumbles on the night for Hidden Valley. One is charged to King, one to Coyer, and the other one was the interception to Coyer. So one of the team leaders for the Titans not having a, a good night. Three turnovers for Hidden Valley, one for Blacksburg, and the Bruins once again, good field position to have an opportunity to capitalize on the Titans' miscue. Well, here's the one. You have to get in the end zone, as Coach Chris talked about in the pregame. Three backs behind Daniel Smith, Bennett, Walters, and Woods. And a timeout, the Bruins weren't really sure about the personnel they needed on the field. 9.29 to go in the half. 6-0 Bruins. They're knocking on the door after that Hidden Valley third turnover. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back with more after this. You're in tune to Blacksburg Bruins football. Yeah, what's up, baby? Want to learn some history? Check it out. Check it out. We your GED right here. Guaranteed, man. Huh? Hey, how you doing? Educational videos, top quality right here. I got live learning, beautiful books inside. The National Center for Family Literacy. Yo, I got your arithmetic right here. Because you can't get your GED on the street. Call 1-877-FAMLIT1 for free learning programs like GED and family computer classes. Who is the high school diploma, huh? The National Center for Family Literacy. The first step to a better life. Welcome back to Bill Brown Stadium. It is 6 0 Blacksburg. Bruins have it first down at the 17. Three backs behind the quarterback, Smith. They hand it off to Woods, and he's knocked out the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing. Matthews there along with James Hainsworth. No gain. Second down and 10. And right now, just want to say on behalf of Jerry Massey, we both are officially in love with Ronnie Aiken. Yes, we. We are. <laughs> Man. Why? Because, well, he brought us food. Ronnie Aiken, he's the man. Every time you go to a high school football stadium, you got to try the chili dogs. Dura Lee from Channel 2, I think, wants one of our chili dogs. Mm. No. He says no. He can't have one either. All right, here we go. <laughs> Looks like out of a and one of those eye formations in the backfield with three backs. This pass is horribly underthrown and intercepted by Hainsworth. He's sprinting down the near sideline, still running, and now the ball is loose, and Matthews recovers for Blacksburg at the 30. Jerry, are you kidding me? That'll be a first down for the Bruins if they do rule it that way because of the change of possession. Bruins have it at the 30. You see that play, what, once out of every 100 games where you get a turnover by the defense as he's running down the field, he was stripped from behind, and then Matthews recovered. He was trying to knock the ball out. He did, and then picked it up, and the Bruins get it right back. Fourth turnover against Hidden Valley. Four, uh, Hidden Valley just shooting themselves in the foot tonight, Rick, and you hardly ever see that kind of play, but great heads-up work by the Blacksburg player, and once again, the Bruins have the football <laughs> in great field position. Hey, Coach, we talked to Coach Phipps. What do you say? Maybe this is the night. Said he felt special. High formation. Hand off to Woods. And he's running east-west. Now turns it up the field, squares those shoulders, and will carry the pigskin for about three. Tackle was made by Ray along with Matthews. Second down and seven. Three-yard run by Woods. We had a couple other scores during the first. Case spring out on Salem, 14-0. Ooh, wow. We and Kalaski ahead, 7-0, the big game at Christiansburg, but Christiansburg had it inside the Pulaski 20. We'll keep you updated on those games throughout the evening, other River Ridge action. 
If that's a correct score down at Cave Spring, wow, what a start for the Knights. Definitely open some eyes in the River Ridge. Two receivers to the near side out of the eye. Smith's going to take the snap, five step drop. Now he's going to step up. Look at him avoid the pressure. That's a nice run. He's got a first down. Daniel Smith, terrific play. Ball comes out, I believe, and it's going to be Hidden Valley possession at the 14. Are you kidding me? We have had seven turnovers. Seven turnovers in this football game. And Coach Chris saying that his quarterback was down. I thought he was too, to be honest with you. But nonetheless, the officials rule otherwise. And now Hidden Valley takes over at the 15. But what a great effort by Smith. Yeah, Smith just uh, trying to do what he could with the football, Rick. And just, just great presence of mind. Seeing the area to run straight up the gut when his receiver was not there. Great pickup blocks in the backfield by Blacksburg, allowing Smith to get away from the defenders. But uh, Smith didn't hold the ball close to his body when he went down, and that's the risky run. And Hidden Valley, once again, they have the football. We have more turnovers than points. Here's an off-tackle play to the right. Nothing doing. Bruins were waiting on it right there. Ray Williams, first one there. Woods, Turley, you name it. Loss of a yard, second down and 11 back at the 14. It was Greenway who had nowhere to roam. No, not at all. Tried to start it up the gut, but turned right. Great pursuit by the Blacksburg defense on that play, forcing second and 11. Seven turnovers in this 6-0 affair. Blacksburg leading, 7-15 to go. Great effort, though, by Daniel Smith. Terrific run, by far his best of the year with his feet. High formation, receiver to each side for Coyer. And we had some problems at the line of scrimmage. That'll be procedure, I believe, against the Titans. Looked like the center snapped the ball. The rest of the linemen stayed down in their stance, or at least a couple of them did. And this should cost the Titans five. That will be the call. So now you're looking at second down and 16. The ball will go back to the nine-yard line. Second penalty on the night for Hidden Valley, 10 yards. One was an illegal substitution play, and the other one was, well, right there. Legal, uh, legal motion. Second and long for Hidden Valley. And uh, they just recently faced this situation. And, well, Blacksburg stopped, forced the punt. Goins will be split to the left. On the far right, that'll be B.J. Mahalso. High formation. They're going to hand it off. This is the tailback Greenway. He's got some room as he slashes ahead near the 20 yard line. They're going to spot it at the 18, a gain of nine on the play. Tackle was made up front by the Bruins. I believe Jonathan Howard was the first man to hit him. So Greenway doing a good job trying to replace their leading back, Jimmy King, and it's going to be third down and seven yards to convert here for Tyler Coyer in this Hidden Valley offense. Have to roll Coyer out right now and maybe send a receiver or two down the field. They're going to split him out wide, but Coyer really needs to get some confidence going. He's only completed two passes on the evening. High formation. Once again, receiver to each side of the field. And they're going to hand it off, try to cross him up with Greenway. And Ray Williams, Jared Walters will make the play to leave it about three yards shy of a first down, a gain of four. Good tackles up front. And I'll tell you what, the Blacksburg defense answering the bell tonight after being pushed around last week by Pulaski. That's right. And they're really stepping it up, especially in the absence of their fallen leader on defense, Herbie Heights. That's a great point. Yep. I mean, they really are playing inspired football. I don't believe Herbie is on the sideline tonight. Of course, you don't blame him with all the damage to his leg. We wish you nothing but the best, Herbie, if you are listening here tonight. All of our thoughts and prayers out to you. And heavy pressure by the Bruins. Nearly blocked the kick. It's going to roll out of bounds far side at about the 43-yard line. And that's where the Bruins will take over. 5.34 to go. Still 6-0. Defense getting it done. The offense has had moments, but you got to hang on to the football. You have to run some clock right now as well. You can't give Hidden Valley and their explosive offense time to get down the field. A couple minutes, that's well enough time for Coyer to get something going offensively. But right now, you have to settle down. You know, Blacksburg's done a good job avoiding, uh, avoiding the, uh, the penalty bug on the evening. And uh, right now, have to hold on to the football. You mentioned seven turnovers, three by Blacksburg, four by Hidden Valley. I'd like to thank everybody tuned in tonight, wherever you might be, here on Super Talk 101.7 FM, the home for Blacksburg Bruins football. Four receivers going to be out in this offensive set. Bennett will be the sole setback. They're going to hand it off to him. Yep, they're going to spread it and hand it off again with a little dive play, and this time a better job by Hidden Valley. The first time that play gained a first down, 
Here it gets three yards as the tackle was made by Tommy Willard, the 5'10", 191-pound defensive tackle. Of course, it's second and about six yards. Blacksburg very successful so far on the quick handoff, Rick. I love that play because the defensive line does not have time to react. and They're going to have to get their reads done early to try to converge on the football. Coming up on our New River Nissan halftime report, we'll have all the first half numbers for you, get you the scores of other games, and Jerry will go down to have a conversation with Dave Christ heading into the locker room. Four receivers out again, five-step drop by Smith. He's looking to go deep, far sideline. Sims is there, and I believe he has it inside the 30. Yes, to the 26-yard line. It's a 21-yard pickup. Or check that, it's a 24-yard pickup. Terrific throw and catch. And what concentration there by the senior wideout, Grant Sims. That's his second catch of the year. Oh, what a spectacular catch by Grant Sims. Man coverage on the far side, Rick. And he just went up and caught the football, brought it into his chest, corralled it before he hit the ground, was inbounds, and keeps the drive alive for the Blacksburg Bruins. 4.40 to go. Terrific concentration to hang on to the football. Two receivers to the right. Slot man will be Clemens. Matthews out wide. High formation with Bennett and Matt Woods. Smith under center is going to hand it off to Woods. And he nearly dropped the ball. Got hit. Somehow stayed on his feet and was able to get about three yards out of what looked like nothing. Matthews finally got him down. But, boy, Woods made those would-be tacklers. Uh, well, he made him punish, huh? He punished him for coming up and wanting to hit him. Well, he punished him with the, his, his thighs and his knees because he just walked right over the defender to try to get some extra yards on the play. You have to like this if you're Coach Dave Chris. Moving the ball down the field. Clock's in your favor. It's winding down here in the first half. No real need to do anything fancy right now. Just pick up another first down and, and keep the drive going. Second down and a long six, we'll call it, from the 23. Three-step drop by Smith. He fires near flat, and it's caught by Matthews inside the 10 to the 7. I don't think the ball was intended for him. Plemons jumped for it. It went through his hands. Matthews caught it for a 16-yard completion, and now Blacksburg has it first down and goal to go. It's the fifth first down on the evening for Blacksburg, Rick. Just one of them situations where Matthews was in the right place at the right time. And, man, is this game taken on. It's been strange. A stra yeah, a strange feeling. Two receivers out to the left. Lemons in the slot. Out wide will be Matthews. Again, similar situation from last week, huh? You have to convert. Ball at the nine of Hidden Valley. High formation. First play is Woods. Left tackle. He's going to lose yardage. Back to the 11. Matthews knocked him down. Just a one-on-one -on -one collision won by the defender for the Hidden Valley Titans. Looks like two trains just converging on each other. Just going head on head and head-to-head, uh, -head rather, and Woods just trying to go just left of the tackle, but it's a great tackle there by Hidden Valley. Second and 11. Again, the clock ticks, and still not a bad situation for Blacksburg because it's in their favor. Don't forget, you can see the replay of this game on WTOB Channel 2, Monday at 7, Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And if we're having a strange night, it's Durley's fault on Channel 2. <laughs> Did she not? Okay, there we go. Two receivers to the near side, running hand off to Woods. Look at him backpedal to get back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard farther to the eight. So now, third down and goal. Now, Jerry, here's the problem. You've got a very sure-footed kicker when he's healthy, Will Matthews. But again, he's got a foot injury. Is this two down territory, you think? And you've missed that extra point tonight. That's right. And you're in that area where, you know, it's almost an extra point kick if you keep it in the middle of the field. So that's going through Dave Chris' mind. But uh, once again, I think you have to, you know, just run the football here. Maybe you'll uh, get past some defenders, try to get closer to the end zone. Third and goal. Ball just outside of the eight-yard line. Receiver to each side. They're looking to throw over the middle. They're going to lob it back of the end zone for the tight end, Grant. And he couldn't hang on. And now a late flag. And I believe we're going to have pass interference by Coyer, who also doubles up as the free safety on defense. And we're going to have first down and goal to go as – J.R. Edwards across the way didn't like the call. Yeah, Coyer just tackled with a grant in the end zone. Yeah, that was an easy call by the yeah. official. So that'll be half the distance to the goal, and go the ball will go to about the four-and-a-half-yard line. Automatic another first mistake. down. There's another mistake by a Hidden Valley team that, you know, you think, Jerry, I know they've lost Judd Cart and Jimmy King's been hurt tonight, but this is a team that went up to Dublin and dominated. Heavily favored Pulaski on homecoming, 31-6. to 
Here tonight, just the opposite. Blacksburg pushing around Hidden Valley. It's amazing the way things change from week to week in this league. Well, they're dominating up front. And offensively for Hidden Valley, defense, uh, the Blacksburg defense is dominating because Hidden Valley just doesn't have the beef up front. You know, it, the Titans have the advantage on the speed end of things, but as far as side, black, uh, size, Blacksburg's just taking it to them. First and goal from the four. It's Bennett, fullback trap. Going to carry to the two. It'll be second down in goal. Once again, Matthews there along with Eric Frost for Hidden Valley. Minute 35 to go. Six nothing Bruins. We're nearing halftime. Blacksburg trying to add to their six nothing lead. Hidden Valley not going to call a timeout. They have all three left on the board. Seven turnovers between the two teams. Keep it on the ground here. We'll see. Receiver to either side. I formation once again. Smith's going to hand it off this time to Bennett, and he got absolutely stuffed at the line of scrimmage. The ball nearly came out, and the man who hit him was Dante Larry, 6'2", 230 pounds, the left defensive tackle. Larry with a big hit straight up the gut. He almost read it. He knew the running play was coming right up the gut between the tackles. And what a hit. Ball is in between the one and the two-yard line. Third down and goal. Now, with 48 seconds, you have two timeouts. Obviously, you don't make it here. Coach Chris will call a timeout to think about what he wants to do on fourth down. But let's see if the Bruins can convert here. I formation, the same formation we've seen on the first two plays. Smith under center, takes the snap, hands it off to Woods. Right tackle, he's in for the touchdown. It officially will go in. The books as a one-yard run, and Matt Woods has two of them tonight. 12 nothing. Matt Woods does the double, going off right tackle. Big block there by Williams, and clears the way for the score for Blacksburg. And right now, that's what you want, heading into the locker room. Big momentum on your side. Now we have a timeout on the field by Blacksburg. They're going to talk about maybe going for two here. 33 ticks to go. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and step out for 30 seconds. We'll come back for the conversion attempt. 12-0 Bruins. You're listening to Blacksburg Football here on Super Talk 101. You'll never have to stop and ask for directions. And you'll be helping a busload of people. And when you pass by, everyone will stop and take notice. If you are at least 20 years of age, have a good driving record, and are interested in working for the best transit system in Virginia, visit our website at www.btransit.org or give us a call at 961-1185. Blackfoot Transit, we're your bus line. All right, after the timeout, they're going to go for two. I formation, Smith's going to throw a pass near side, nowhere near Plemons, and the score will remain 12 to nothing. We'll keep it here with our halftime break coming up. But the Bruins playing terrific football here tonight. They lead it by a couple touchdowns. 70-yard run by Matt Woods, then a one-yard touchdown run. And Blacksburg right now handing it to the Hidden Valley Titans. 12-0. Coach Chris, so impressed, as are we, with how this team continues to play so hard. It was a nine-play, 57-yard drive, took 5.01 off the clock. And the Bruins have a very rare lead that we've seen over the past few weeks with all the injuries that have mounted up with this team. They have not quit. This is a special group of kids, folks. It really is. You go to practice, you watch them, and you talk to some of them. This is a group of kids that haven't given up on the season or more importantly, on themselves. And it's coming through here tonight against a very talented team. Hidden Valley again, 5-2. and two. They won at Pulaski two weeks ago in homecoming in Dublin. That's unheard of. Held Pulaski to 94 total yards in that game. Now, granted, they don't have Judd Cart, their best offensive player, Jimmy King, their tailback injured in this game. But nonetheless, Blacksburg can empathize. Blacksburg can empathize. They've been there before. Now Matthew's going to kick it back to Hidden Valley. He's going to keep it on the ground. Smart play. It's going to elude the up men and be fumbled back here. Now picked up by Goins, running to the 20, 25. He's just looking for some space, and he'll carry ahead to the 31-yard line. So about a 12-yard return, 25 seconds to go. Hidden Valley has all three of their timeouts left, but they don't have a whole lot of time. We'll see what Coach Edwards decides to do. Will he play it safe, hand it off, get in the locker room, talk things over, and see if he can regroup the second half here on the road from Bill Brown Stadium. Sure, Coach Chris will be very pleased with what he's seen so far here from his football team. Jerry Massey on the field before we begin our New River Nissan halftime coverage. He'll get a 
quarter two from the Blacksburg head coach. Shotgun by Coyer, so they're not going to be conservative. He's going to take the snap, roll out to the right, get flush, turn it up, go down. Good sack on the play, a loss of five yards, and it was Matt Woods who made the play. Back to the 25, second down and 15 forthcoming for the Hidden Valley Titans. And now, you probably just let that clock run on out, or they call a timeout. It's like Coyer's running over. Yep, Hidden Valley has called a timeout. We'll just keep it right here with 17 ticks on the scoreboard clock. 70-yard run by Matt Woods to start the game, the very first play of the game for Blacksburg. Get down and go from the one over right tackle to extend the lead. Again, Will Matthews has got an injured foot. Could not convert the first extra point, so Blacksburg forced to go for two. It did not succeed on the pass that was short. And now they're looking at a 12-0 lead over Hidden Valley as we're set to head into halftime. But Hidden Valley trying to get something going. This is an offense that can strike quickly. But their most talented athlete after Judd Cart, Jimmy King, was injured in this game with apparent knee injury. And they're trying to get down the field from their own 25 now. Shotgun by Coyer. He'll be flanked by Alex Ray at his 19. Takes the snap. He's looking to go down the middle of the field. Flush. He's going to have to run for his life. He's going to be sacked by Talmadge Flincham. Terrific play by Flincham. Loss on the play of four more, and Hidden Valley is going to call another timeout. Curious that Coach Edwards is continuing to call timeouts. Ball's now at your 19. You got third down and about a $20 taxi cab ride. And the only thing you're going to do here is maybe turn the football over. But Blacksburg's defense rising to the challenge. You go on the road, you can try to get your money's worth. Be the first lead that Blacksburg has had at the break. I'm trying to think the last time they were leading at halftime. We'll have to go back and check our records. It's been a while. High formation for what could be the final play of our opening session here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium. Coyer under center with eight seconds. Now they're going to hand it off to Ray. And he'll carry for a yard, and that's going to bring up fourth down, and that's going to do it for our opening half of football here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium with Blacksburg leading it by a score of 12 to nothing. Now we're going to go down. Jerry Massey going to have the opportunity to talk with Jay Chris. Jerry, go ahead, my man. All right, thanks a lot, Rick. Coach Chris, you have to be very pleased at how your team is playing in the first half. Well, we've gotten the ball in the end zone a little bit. We're playing really well defensively. Uh, we're making a few more mistakes on the offensive side of the ball than I'd like for us to be making. But, you know, we, you know the kids are still playing hard, and, and they've done that all year. And we just, you know, I think they kind of took it on themselves. They were going to play a little bit harder uh, tonight. So we still got two more quarters to go, and Hidden Valley's still an awfully good football team. Matt Woods, nine carries over 80 yards on the evening, a couple of touchdowns. You have to be pleased with his performance as well. Well, you know, he's been a tight end or a fullback his whole career, so he's been a running back for three weeks or, or as a tailback. So, plus he's playing defensive end on the strong side also, so it takes, you know, takes a little bit out of him there. But he's learning how to play. And defensively, you forced four turnovers. So, on the defensive side, you have to be pleased. Defensively, we're playing very well. Okay, Coach, best of luck. Thanks, Jim. All right, Rick, those are the thoughts of Dave Chris. Let's go back upstairs to you. All right, thanks a lot, Jay Man. Good job there. Coach Chris, very pleased. Says a little bit more uh, effort on offense, not as many mistakes, but you have to be happy if you're up 12 0 when you've lost six games in a row. We'll take a timeout, we'll come back, and we'll begin our New River Nissan halftime coverage after this. You're in tune to Blacksburg football here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. Richie! Oh, you got 我不信得過佢啊。Yo, Ty, what up, Richie? What up, player? 爺爺,係你叫我唔好判人㗎。你記唔記得啊? you doing, son? All right, man. Chilling, of course. Imagine the power of one voice. Click freedomcenter.org to find yours. All right, welcome back to Bill Brown Stadium. It's halftime. Good news for change, huh? 12 nothing. Blacksburg leading over the Hidden Valley Titans. And trying to think, Jerry, going back, the last time Blacksburg had the lead at halftime may have been the opening game of the season against the Giles Spartans. 
Don't quote me on that. I have to think about this here. I've got to find some stats make sure I want to get this right. That's what we do. We get things right here on the network. And if that is correct, you're looking at two months ago. Ooh. Well, that kind of puts it in perspective, doesn't it? It, does. <laughs> it really does. Interesting comments from Coach Chris. Uh, very happy with the defense, and I like that, though. He's always pushing for more. You know, he's never satisfied. Any good coach wouldn't be. I like that when he just says, look, you know what? We're just not playing well offensively. We're not doing the things offensively we want, even though they've been successful. And Blacksburg right now in a position where they can't afford to ever think that they have done enough the way it's going. And that is indeed the case, Jerry. This is the first halftime lead since they were ahead of Giles at the break. That is it. They were behind at Graham against William Fleming. Bottom top. No score against Northside. Cave Spring, Tulaski last week. So August 27th through October 29th, and Blacksburg has their first halftime lead. That's amazing, especially when you put it in perspective like you just did. And uh, the Bruins, well, they take hey. advantage on uh, of some of the yeah. uh, four turnovers at Hidden Valley have committed on the evening. Of course, Daniel Smith offensively, four of seven passing, okay. one interception, and the interception was just a, a, a bad pass and just threw right behind his receiver. But very fortunate enough for a teammate right, to cool. strip Thanks, the football man. away from the Thanks. defender who intercepted it to give Blacksburg possession once again. So even though that does count as a turnover, Blacksburg was still able to name that uh, possession after that play with Matt Woods on the night, nine carries, 83 yards, running hard. Now, granted, uh, of course, two touchdowns. Granted, he had a 70-yard touchdown run, and his average drops down if you take that out. But uh, nonetheless, he's delivering some punishing blows to the Hidden Valley defense, especially when running straight up the gut. 12 nothing here at the break. A couple other scores at halftime. Pulaski County Lane at the Christiansburg, 21-0. Wow. But, you know, that was a team that was down by 21 points to Salem a couple weeks ago at halftime. Came back to win 36-35. 21-0 Pulaski County. Very physical team. We saw that uh, firsthand last week. Leading Christiansburg at the break. And Cave Spring ahead of Salem at the half, 14-7. The other two huge games tonight in the River Ridge District. We'll also try to get a radford Glenver score uh, from Brian back in our studios a little later on as well. But, anyway... Uh, the way it's playing out here tonight, Blacksburg couldn't ask for a better start. 12 nothing, They lead it over the Hidden Valley Titans. We'll take a timeout, and we'll see if we'll have all the official stats coming up from uh, Martin Jansen's after this. Stay with us. Don't go away. You're in tune to the New River Nissan Halftime Show here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. Uh, Mrs. DeBruzzo, I'm Ed McMahon, and we're Ed signing up You're people Ed for... Yeah, yes, 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 I am. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Murphy, Ed McMahon. Uh, we're starting up... No, Woo! no, 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 Dreams no. Dreams really do come at, true. Oh, but it's dinero, dinero. No, 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 no. Con Yes, Ed con McMahon, cameras, see. Ed McMahon. Uh, yes, Ed McMahon. We're having our first Ed ever... Ed McMahon. Yes. <laughs> Tuesday night at the high school. Uh, we're starting up the uh, neighborhood watch in this area, and here's all the information. Uh, Stevie! Get down here, please. No, we just did. It's just, it's Five, just. six, seven, eight. No tango to know. Neighborhood see. watch. We're having this neighborhood watch, the first one. Right. Larry, put some pants on. I'll, I'll come back. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Start a neighborhood watch. It's just one of the many ways you can help make America stronger. To find out how, call or log on for this free guide. Well, Jerry just hit it right on the head. He's right. Why is it such a strange night? It's Halloween weekend. And there's a full moon out. And we've seen a lot of strange things. 12 nothing Blacksburg. And, yeah, that constitutes as being strange. Uh, the Bruins haven't let it halftime in over two months. Seven turnovers between the two squads. And uh, Blacksburg will take that every time, though, if they look up and see themselves ahead on the scoreboard. Yeah, they will. And uh, that's all that matters right now. Blacksburg trying to grab a win, and especially coming back from all of these injuries. Uh, you have to feel for these kids that have worked very hard in the past several weeks when the losing streak was going on through the times where the kids were having a tough go at it. But uh, nonetheless, they really stepped up tonight. And even though seven total turnovers have been caused, Blacksburg has the momentum <laughs> going into the second half. Here, take this laptop, Jerry. It's called filling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw in one other score before I let Jerry uh, have the halftime numbers. Uh, Glenver leading Radford 21-0. Oh, wow. Late in the second quarter. 
down at Glen. So, uh, Coach Norm Lindbergh seems to have a very tough time. Yeah. Uh, getting to the, they've also dropped them to five losses on the season. Yeah, they're going to be struggling. They still got uh, Floyd on the schedule. Could be a sub 500 year there for, uh, well, one of the nicest men and one of the best coaches this state's ever seen. So J Man, first half number. All right, let's do it. Let's talk about first downs. Blacksburg with six, Hidden Valley with four on the evening. Rushing yards, Blacksburg has doubled up Hidden Valley. The Bruins, 18 carries, 126 yards. Hidden Valley, 19 carries for 63 yards. So the Vikings are averaging uh, just a little over three yards per carry, about 3.3. Passing yards, Blacksburg for 59, Hidden Valley for 26. Attempts, just about even, four of seven, one interception for Blacksburg, three of seven, one interception for Hidden Valley. Total offense, well, Blacksburg has Hidden Valley by 96 yards. The Bruins, 25 total plays, 185 yards compared to Hidden Valley's 26 total plays for 89 yards. Fumbles on the evening, been a big story. Blacksburg, two fumbles, both of them lost. Hidden Valley, three fumbles, and all three of them have been lost. Penalties, Blacksburg very disciplined tonight. No penalties so far in the evening, but the Vikings, or the uh, Titans rather, four penalties for 23 yards. Possession time just about even. Third down possessions or conversions. Blacksburg two of four. Hidden Valley 0 of six. And the Bruins one of two in the red zone tonight. Hidden Valley 0 of one. Now, individual statistics for Hidden Valley. Matt Greenway six carries for 26 yards. That's a little over a four yard average. Jimmy King four carries for 20 yards. That's a five yard average. Also Alex Ray three carries for 19 yards. And that was about it. Passing three of seven, one interception, as I mentioned. Receiving Jimmy King, one reception for 11 yards. Also Brian Bush, one reception for eight yards. And jo Josiah Goins, one reception for seven yards. Now over to Blacksburg. Matt Woods on the evening, nine carries, 85 yards officially, 71 yards officially on the touchdown. It's good for a 9.4 yard Average two touchdowns on the night for Woods. Sean Bennett, seven carries for 28 yards. Daniel Smith, one carry for 13 yards. Kevin Gregory, one carry for zero yards. Remember, that was one of the fumbles for the Bruins in the first half. Daniel Smith passing. We mentioned his numbers. Will Matthews, I think once again, a pretty good night receiving three receptions for 32 yards, along with 17 yards. And Grant Sims, one reception for 27 yards. Punting, Talmadge Valencia, good night again. Two for 40 yards. And uh, kickoff returns, Kevin Gregory, one for 19 yards. Here's your scoring summary. First play from offense in the game for Blacksburg. Matt Woods carries it to the house, 71 yards. One play drive, 71 yards. One run, 18 seconds. And Blacksburg took the lead at six to nothing after the extra point failed. Blacksburg then scored again with 33 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Matt Woods on a one-yard run. The pass was failed for the two-point conversion. Capped off a nine-play, 57-yard drive, taking five minutes, one second off the clock, and that's where we are right now. Blacksburg 12, Hidden Valley nothing. And the Bruins are 24 minutes away from their first victory in over a month's time, Rick Watson. Hey, we got Tootsie Pops. Yeah, I know. How'd that happen? The, um, it was her fault. Who? Uh, Durley? Yeah. Uh, she's taking care of us as always. Yes. Channel 2, WTOB. You can see the replays Mondays at 7, Wednesday afternoons at 3. If you have WTOB on your cable system, like some people don't. <laughs> it needs to be statewide. It's that good. I agree. You know, they have that... And I don't want to criticize other folks, but I'm going to. You know, they do that thing on uh, the other channel. Right. That weekly high school game they've done for years. Uh -huh. The quality here is so much better, it's not even, you can't even compare the two. Oh, well, you're right. Look at the video. I mean, we're sitting here watching the video quality throughout the game. Crystal on our clear. Monitor. Yeah. Appreciate what the Roanoke Station does down there, you know. They mean well. It's a great effort. Huh? What? <laughs> I got a lollipop. Yeah. Thanks, real. Huh? Oh, uh, thank you very much. It's also my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she seems really thrilled. Well, yeah, she does. All right, it's 12 nothing. Blacksburg's thrilled. They have the lead. They have to be. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more of our halftime coverage. Talk a little bit about where we're going to be next week.
Stay with us. Don't go away. You're tuned to Bruins football here on Super Talk 101. That's because I started going down the hill again, and I just. She's my kid. I had to just go. Because I started kind of losing my momentum. I just had to start running. She is my job. I ran into a bunch of kids. We just she is my cat. So we all stood up. So Things can get pretty ugly when you're bored. In an after school program, you can find something way better to do. Hey there. Hi. I haven't seen you before. I know, yeah, man. I know. I they get the ball here. too. That's the thing. I they can know. stop them this opening drive. Wanna hang yeah. out or something? Um. Cause I have a feeling they get the job we're gonna be bad, bad. Things can get pretty ugly when you're bored. In an after-school program, you can find something way better to do. Let's play a game. Let's pretend for a moment. You own an apartment building, and I want to rent from you. I have a steady job, I make a good salary, and have a good credit history. Would you rent your place to me? How about now? Do you still like me, or have your opinions changed? What if I have an accent, or a last name that sounds foreign? What if I have a disability? What if I'm a single parent? Would you steer me so away? Dinner and dessert. Would you close the dinner door? And dessert. <laughs> Would you? The Fair Housing Act protects your right to live where you want, no matter what your race, color, national origin, sex, religion, disability, or family status. If you think you've been discriminated against, call us. Fair housing, it's not an option, it's the law. Welcome back to Bill Brown Stadium, 12-0. The Bruins enjoying their first lead since opening night back on August 27th at the break. Two touchdown runs by Matt Woods. Rick Watson, Jerry Massey here with you. Got some Tootsie Rolls going. My favorite flavor, too, Raspberry. How'd they know? I have no idea. I got the grape. How did you, Durley, what's up, Durley? You are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us some pretty cool WTOB shirts. Last week as well. Oh, we'll have to sport them next yeah, time. Yeah, we will. Yeah, For the final nice. home game. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Our final one in two weeks. Christiansburg, big rivalry. They're, yeah. getting, they're getting it handed to them tonight by <laughs> those. I think the Cougars got mad, huh? Yeah. After they lost to Hidden Valley. I think so as well. And Kevin Krauss went out early in that game but came back with a shoulder injury. But uh, he's been doing well for the Cougars, leading them to the 21 0 lead. But you got to think Coach Tim Cromer has to make adjustments at halftime. You know he's in there barking at his defense. Yes, it's time he to is. step up. It'll be the third time in successive weeks for the Blue Demons to have to hold the line on defense to try to get them their uh, themselves back in the football game. And I talked with him this past week on uh, Big Dog Sports Talk. Heard weekdays here from three to six on Super Talk one hundred one point seven FM. Shameless plug. And he said that the one thing about Pulaski is that. You know, it was one thing to take on Salem, but the Christiansburg kids kind of are in this all of Pulaski County. It's one thing seeing those colors and that uniform, and I think that may have come into play tonight a little bit too. You know, he said that's something we have to get over, and we've heard that before when we were doing the Radford High School games when we talked to the coaches at Auburn, Eastmont, and Glenver. They'd be like, whoa, here comes Radford. You know, and I think that's something that you have to get over, even though you're 7-0. and And it's one thing to have success and you feel good about yourself, but when you get down early to a team you – you don't beat very often, if ever. Um, it kind of takes you back to where maybe you were before, and that's something Coach Krummer's got to work on at halftime as well. It's a middle game. You know, it you is, have to get over it. You know, you, you, you hear about this tradition growing up as kids, and and this is what you see. These are the, the teams that you see, or the programs, rather, you see holding up these, uh, these trophies and, and winning titles. And, you know, along with that side of it, you have to look at the way you approach going into the football game. You have to go in expecting to win rather than hoping to win. And some teams get psyched out due to the fact that they are going up against a program, not necessarily a team that has a storied history behind them, no matter if the team may be up, may be down that time of season. Now you and I will be traveling down to Salem next week. 7 o'clock will be on the air. 7.30 will be the kick. The Bruins and the uh, Salem Spartans. Terrific game here last year that Blacksburg was able to win. It kind of propelled them into the postseason and the Spartans. Right now, trailing at the break, 2K Spring, 14-7. We'll keep you updated on that game. 
But um, always tough to win that at Salem Stadium for uh, various reasons. New head coach Steve McEnfower, he's doing a pretty good job trying to adjust to life without the legendary Willis White. Yeah, and uh, definitely a, an interesting situation for him to walk into. He's bounced around in the head coaching ranks over the past few years uh, here in the uh, southwest Virginia uh, area. Of course, he was at Glimber. Then he jumped to Hidden Valley when they opened, and now he's at Salem. Some big shoes to, to fill, of course, Willis White leading that story. Uh, story program to, uh, to multiple state championships and state championship game appearances. All right, let's go ahead and step out for one more break. When we come back, it'll be time for the second half kick. Bruins leading at 12 nothing. You're listening to Blacksburg Football here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. to make your home more defensible against wildfire. What have you got to lose except everything? Blacksburg in Hidden Valley here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium. 12-0 is our score. Bruins to be on defense to start out, Jerry. Very important to get off to a good start here. Hidden Valley, of course, won the opening toss to first in the second half. And as high powered as this offense is, you're going to be very careful in this opening possession is to Blacksburg. And it'll be interesting to see what types of adjustments that head coach J.R. Edwards made during the half halftime break to his team. Remember, you know, he's down some players, Rick. Jimmy King, also Jug Cart. Cart never did uh, start this game. He's been on the sidelines with his arm in a sling. But uh, how will Hidden Valley try to rework their offense to try to get some positive things going for them. Of course, they've committed four turnovers on the evening, one interception by Coyer, another fumble by Coyer, Jimmy King with a fumble, and of course, uh, Greg Matthews with a fumble on the pickoff uh, from uh, quarterback of Blacksburg, Daniel Smith. What a great play, too, by Matthews, huh? He knocked the ball out on the interception play. Remember right. that? And he's got the ball back for his team. I mean, four turnovers by Hidden Valley, three by Blacksburg. We'll see, though. Uh, coming out here in the third quarter. Could be a dangerous time but maybe the defense will stay as dominant as they were. And this field really chewed up now. Um, after the first, I guess, the first quarter against Pulaski, you could tell the field wasn't going to be the same the rest of the season with all the rain we've had. But, again, only one more game after this at Bill Brown. That's in two weeks against Crosstown rival Christiansburg. Will Matthews from right to left going to kick it back to the Titans, and we are underway here in the third quarter. It's a high, deep kick going to be taken by King, it looks like. He's back out there. Good news. He's across the 15 to the 20, running to his left. 25, 30, there he goes. Far sideline, 40, 45, 50, still trudging ahead all the way down to the Blacksburg 42. And that sideline across the way just exploded because that's a young man who was injured. We didn't know if he'd play again. And what does he do? He comes out and returns at 57 yards. Amazing. I mean, what can you say about that? It looked like his night was done with when he was injured, and it looked like he had a severe injury, which may have limited his action, not only for tonight, folks, but during the rest of the season. And there he comes out, sprints ahead, gets the big return, and the Blacksburg kicker makes the big tackle. Matthews made two big plays, getting the turnover and also that tackle to save a touchdown. Boy, King's got some wheels. Two receivers to the right. The handoff goes to King over left tackle, and he's stuffed this time at the line of scrimmage. Gets it to the 40. Play originated from the 42, second down and eight. It looks like King is down again. Drumheller in Woods, there he is. King is injured again on the first carry after the kickoff, the two-yard gain. And Man, this kid is just leaving all of himself out there between the white lines. He's grimacing out there, Rick, and maybe it was a situation where he came back too early. Maybe he got a little bit of an adrenaline rush. During his off time, most uh, all the second quarter and during the halftime break, maybe thought he could go. And of course, right after the big kickoff return, he carries the football to start off the second half, and now he's down. And again, looks like he's wincing in pain, quite a bit of pain, just like he did when he originally was injured. This time, though, it looks like an upper body injury for Jimmy King. He's 5'7", 140 pounds. He's the fastest player on the team. That's even with a healthy Judd Cart, their fine receiver. We saw that speed, an example of it on this opening kickoff to start the third quarter. He carried for two yards over left tackle, and 
He's been down since, and now he's slowly being helped up by the training staff for the Hidden Valley Titans, and now he's going to limp off, and now it looks like it's his right leg, Jerry. Yep, this time the right leg is causing him some problems. Very gingerly walking off the field, needing help by two of the staff of Hidden Valley. Picks up a couple of yards to start off this second quarter now, and Hidden Valley back to plan B. After King was injured in the first half, they had to shuffle around some personnel. Of course, Greenway got some carries, more so than he's used to, and he may get some more here during the third quarter. Single receiver to the right, Jos Josiah Goins. High formation for Hidden Valley. And play action handoff going to go to Greenway over left tackle, and he is running hard for about seven yards down to about the 32-yard line. We'll call it 34 now. They bring it back. So third down and a long two coming up. We'll call it three yards. It's nice push up front on the left side. They're, like, they're running to the left now, the left side of their offensive line, which is the right side of that Blacksburg defensive front. They found something they like over there. Yeah, and the guys on the left side, yeah, decent height, but very small as far as weight. You have Willard at 191 and Frost at a buck 84. So the left guard and left tackle average about 188 pounds. High formation. Mahalso split to the near side. Boyer going to spin away, now roll to the right. He's looking to throw on the run, and a dangerous pass caught by Bush, the tight end at the 20, cuts back at the 15. Grant Duncan hanging on for dear life. He's going to take it to the 10. First down and goal to go, a 24-yard pass and catch. Dangerous throw on the run by Coyer. Terrific concentration grab by Bush, and he made a nice run afterward. And it's the initial first down of the second half for Hidden Valley, and it was just who wanted it more. The ball was up there. Even though it was a short pass, Bush got most of his yardage on the ground after he caught the football. But Bush went up and got it, got it at its highest point, which is good coaching there, and then was able to race down the field for an extra 10, 15 yards to put Hidden Valley inside the red zone. Well, I'll tell you what, whatever J.R. Edwards said to his team, it's paid off thus far. High formation, two receivers to the right side, a handoff to Greenway, he's got some room, splitting the tackles to the four yard line, he got six on the play. Touchdown save for the moment by Talmadge Flincham. Straight up the gut there, running behind uh, Aston Ryder, the big center, six foot 260 a senior. Straight up the gut, second down. Program last year in their second year, Jerry won two games. I believe they got one win their first year, then they were two and eight. This year already five and two. Steady improvement. They got a lot of talented young athletes in that program. Second out and goal. Ball just inside the five, and now a timeout going to be taken by Hidden Valley. 9.27 to go. Titans knocking on the door for the first time. We'll step out, take a break. You're in tune to Bruins football here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. 428 Essex, pile up on the premises. Good 20, we're on it. Just roll. In there. Yeah, we'll handle this, man. Hmm. What? We're ready to be very civil about this. Mm -mm. You never know when a polyp is going to show up. Get the polyp early and stop colon cancer before it even starts. Just get a test from your doctor. Get the test, get the polyp. Nice surgeon's touch. Get the cure. After the timeout, Hidden Valley breaks the huddle. Second and goal at the five. The two receivers out to the left, Mahalso and Chris Leonard. High formation of Ray and Greenway. Ball directly in the middle of the field. Coyer brings him set. Looks over the defense. Now he's going to hand it off to Greenway. Right tackle this time, and he's going to break a tackle to the two. Third down and goal, Walters along with Holmes in on the stop for the Bruins. Play went right. Pretty and Huto on the right side there for Hidden Valley clearing the way with the Blacksburg defense holding firm. Big third down situation now for the Hidden Valley Titans. Blacksburg defense, Matt Drumheller trying to get the troops going. Huge play here on third down, no doubt. They're going to have to hold them twice. This is two down territory for the Titans, down by 12 on the road. A split backfield, now full house backfield. Handoff's going to go to Greenway, and he's going to take it to the one, and that play really got stagnated. There was a collision in the backfield. Dante Larry ran into Coyer, 
trying to get up the field to block for Greenway, and it slowed the play up, allowed Blacksburg's Ray Williams to pursue, and now fourth down and goal from the one, and needless to say, this is maybe the biggest play in the football game, and Coach Phipps wants to talk about it. We'll keep it right here with 8.28 to go. First time out charge to Blacksburg. What a play by Larry. Just shooting up the gut, causing confusion, uh, confusion in the backfield. Quarterback runs right to the running back. And the uh, running back there has to adjust Greenway, try to sidestep to get some sort of gain. He did, but he had to lunge ahead and was a yard short of reaching the goal line. You can't put into words, although that's our job, the emotional burst this would mean to the Bruins if they're able to turn them away here and take over the football and maintain that 12-point advantage that they enjoy right now. And I like their chances when Coach Phipps, Vaughn Phipps, one of the best in the business, has been here 27 years. I like their chances when he takes a timeout to say, okay, look for this, look for that, make adjustments, we'll see. It's going to be power versus power for fourth down, a gigantic play in the early stages of the second half. A full house backfield for Hidden Valley. Fourth and goal from the one. Boyer, quarterback keeper, and he will not get there. The Bruins push him back. They'll take over at the two, and it was up front led by Nick Green and Joe Turley and Vaughn Phipps. Yes, the adjustments paid off. What a play. What can you say about that? Blacksburg jams everyone in, side two yards of the box of the original line of scrimmage, and just absolutely nowhere to run, Rick, for Coyer. And Coyer was stopped at the line and pushed back, and Blacksburg will get the football deep, deep in its own territory. But you have to like the trade-off after stopping Hidden Valley on four downs from the 10-yard line. And I got to question the call a bit from Coach Edwards going with a quarterback sneak that really had no momentum, and now they're going to snap it. Nope. Smith, I thought he was going to keep that, and he did. He fell across the six. He just took the snap, charged up the field. That's a nice run of five yards on first down. That gives him a little bit of breathing room. But, you know, I'll tell you, Blacksburg had a huge push up front, nine men along the line of scrimmage. You try the quarterback sneak. Coyer looked like he slipped a bit, and he had nowhere to go. It's almost one of them step-back deals and have to lunge forward. But very quick reaction time by the Blacksburg defense. They got lower than their counterparts across the way, and that created room for the linebackers to, to push that – uh, line of scrimmage back, Blacksburg gets possession. Terrific play by the Bruins defense. And again, another running play right up the middle. And you're looking at about two yards shy of a first down. That was Bennett, I believe, a pickup of four. Going to spot it at the nine. Third down and two for Blacksburg. And now Daniel Smith's leaving the field. He's got an injury to his left arm, but he comes over to get a towel and get the play call from Coach Chris. I like that. It was Smith who kept the football that time. Back-to-back -back quarterback keepers, not Bennett. I saw the four. didn't see the one on the other side of it. And, well, here you go, third down. And if you can move the sticks here, a huge accomplishment. 7.09 to go in the third. I formation, receiver out to the right will be Clemens. Woods dots the eye. And I think Hidden Valley jumped, Jerry. They had a different snap count. The cadence was changed, and it looks like four different White Jersey Titans came across, made contact, and they're going to give the Bruins a first down with the undisciplined play, and that's a huge break for Blacksburg. Yeah, first down via penalty there for the Bruins, and what can you say about that great discipline by the Blacksburg offensive line? Would have been very easy, especially deep in your own territory, to jump ahead of the snap count, but nonetheless, design play all along, try to draw the defense off sides, and Hidden Valley just does so, and Blacksburg now with some breathing room. I bet that came from Coach Chris, too. I bet that's why he brought the quarterback over, to see if he could get him to jump, and it worked. Two receivers to the right, eye formation. Smith's going to hand it off. This is Woods. He's going to get the corner on the near side of the 15 to the 20 and be drug out of bounds as he slid to the turf right there. Gain of six. Mahalso wrestled him down, second down and four, but that's a nice run by Matt. Nice job there by Matt Woods approaching the century mark, but Sean Bennett, Blocked two people at once <laughs> on that play along the left side. It was a lead blocker and had a double pancake block on the two outside men for Hidden Valley. That allowed Woods to slip outside and able to dive ahead. Well, that name Bennett and that number four, folks around here used to seeing it. Shane, his brother graduated, and he was a terrific two-way player. This is Bennett up the middle. Did the ball come out? Got maybe a yard on the play to the 21. Third down and three. Ball did not come out. 
So now we'll see what Coach Chris comes up with. 5.45 to go, and the Bruins maintaining that 12-0 lead they took into the locker room. Bruins liking the drama. A couple of third down situations for them so far in this drive. Remember, it started inside the five, about the one, two yard line. Rick Watson, Jerry Massey here with you from Bill Brown Stadium. Glad to have you listening. The Bruins football and Super Talk 101.7 FM. I formation, Bennett and Woods. Two receivers to the right, Matthews wide. Clemens in the slot. Smith brings him set. Hidden Valley jumped again. This time, though, they were able to get back, and Woods won't get the first down. He's going to slide his way across the line and then get pushed out of bounds by Greenway Mahasso. No gain. Fourth down coming up, and now it's going to take a big Talmadge Flincham effort on the punt to kind of give Blacksburg's defense a little bit more green to try to defend. Flincham on the evening, two punts for a 40-yard average. Getting it done. Just making sure you have the block up front. Hidden Valley. And kind of close on one occasion, but uh, nonetheless, Flincham with a lot of poise standing 13 yards back behind the football. Can we dub him the weapon? We could. You know, Talmadge, the weapon, the punter from the seventh. And this one's very high and short. It's going to bounce at the 45 and go backward, and Drumheller will touch it, and it'll be spotted right there. So not one of Flincham's best efforts. 24 yards on the net, but nonetheless, Blacksburg will send their defense out. 5.03 to go, leading 12 to nothing. And some nice clock management there by the Bruins. Eight off some, the third quarter clock, and now we're over halfway through this third quarter, and Hidden Valley really needs to take advantage of the field position that they are getting on the positive side of the field. They had it inside the five and could not score. Fourth down, a quarterback sneak was pushed away, and the Bruins held at that point. Now, as Jerry mentioned, good field position. I'm going to send two receivers to the short side of the field. That's the right. Slot man's Mahasso. Leonard is wide. Eye formation. Now Mahasso will go in motion to the left. Backs are in the eye. Coyer's going to roll that way to the wide side of the field. He can run it for some big yardage, and he's going to have it first down as he leapfrogs at the 35 to the 34, where Walters will put him away. It's going to be a gain of 11 on the play. That was a design roll run by the quarterback, Coyer. We mentioned what a great athlete he was during the pregame. And you notice that Coyer, once again, makes his decision to run really, really early. He tried to fake there, but he did it with the open hand. So that would have been easy to read for, uh, to read for the, the Bruins there. But Coyer, he makes up his mind very, very quickly, able to get out in the left flat, and able to pick up first down for the Titans. Left to right they work as you listen here on Super Talk 101.7. Backs are in the eye, Ray and Greenway. Now Goins will go in motion to the right. Three-step drop, Hoyer looking to roll, gets cut off by Green. Now he wants to reverse field, and he's got a lot of green grass. Now he's got an open receiver, and now he's got an interception. Grant Sims closed on the play and picked it off at the goal line. He's across the 10 to the 15, takes it to the 17. What a terrific play by Sims. It was a good decision by Coyer, just a better defensive play, and that is the fifth turnover of this football game forced by the Blacksburg defense. Intended receiver down the field was Montoni, Rick, and he was, uh, Sims just confer, uh, conversion on that football very quickly, made a very athletic play, and Hidden Valley once again unable to convert on great field position. In Blacksburg, you have to think on this weekend of Halloween, they really have the, uh, the, the treats <laughs> going on their huh? way, yeah. Well, Hidden Valley's knocked on the door. They've been denied the candy so far. Like Charlie Brown, the great pumpkin, getting rocks in there. Treat back. Here's a handoff, a trap play to Bennett. He's got some room to roam, and he fumbles, but it bounces right to the hands across the way. I did not see who picked it up. It picks up about four more yards. Blacksburg maintains possession. I believe it was Plemons. Well, there you go, on cue, huh? We were talking about it, and the ball's taken out to the 33-yard line. It's going to end up being a 16-yard game. And Bennett will get 12, <laughs> and Plemons will get four on the carry. Oh, man, oh, man. Have you seen the great pumpkin there, Jerry? No, I haven't, but I will keep an eye out for it Durling. when I go interview Coach. Early. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she's pointing yeah, at she's it. she's yelling at us. All right, 33-yard line. DeSalvo will be in the slot. The wide man will be Matthew. Split backfield this time with Bennett and Gregory, who hasn't seen a lot of action in the backfield. Going to be a design quarterback keeper. And Smith's tackled ahead for a couple for the 36-yard line. Hainsworth was the first man shooting through to bring down the Blacksburg quarterback. We're now under four minutes, and it's still 
12 nothing Blacksburg. And Blacksburg can afford to take some time here. We're under four, like you mentioned, Rick. And Daniel Smith getting some yardage. You see him recently getting some yardage on those uh, those first down draws or just four first down quarterback sneaks going right up the gut. Blacksburg might have to change that up a little bit as the quarter progresses. Have the eye, they'll work again. Second down. This will be a play action. It's going to be a straight pass. Near side to Salvo. Has it 45. Spins away at the 50. 45 down to the 42 yard line. Great throw and catch. Smith to Peter DeSalvo from the 36 all the way down. They're going to spot it at, looks like the 43. So, about what, a 21 yard gain off the top of my head? Something like Pretty that. Pretty good, yeah. I bet. That's that Bradford University education we both shared, Jim. And we both. Did not major in math. No, we did not. But a first down throw and catch. How about DeSalvo? The spin made a terrific adjustment. His sixth grab of the season. Peter DeSalvo, six feet, 145. He'll be back next year, just a junior. Fleet footed. High formation. Clemens out to the right. Blacksburg playing with a lot of confidence, backed by their defense. High formation. Smith's going to hand it off to Wood straight up the middle. Now he tries to shoot it wide, and Alex Ray wouldn't let him have it. He just grabbed his waist and slung him down. David in there as well. Loss of two back to the 45, second down and 12. And that's just a good defensive play. And again, nobody blocked the linebacker shooting through. Yeah, he just came straight up the gut and tackled Woods. But Woods very fundamentally sound tonight, Rick, and you see him with both arms corralling the football. And, of course, I'm pretty sure he learned his lesson, especially after last week's contest with Pulaski County. Can't really say the, team, the same about some of the other you know, players out on the field, but nonetheless, Woods doing a nice job holding on to the rock tonight. Smith brings him set. He went back to ask the official question. Now he gets him to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 12, pass play. Smith's rolling out, and now he's going to be sacked. And I believe it was Dante Larry. Yes, it was. A three-yard loss, third and 15 forthcoming. Two minutes left, and now pressure by this Hidden Valley defense, their best surge of the night on that side of the football. Of course, it's Blacksburg in a third and long situation. Ball on the wide side of the field, or the far side of the field. Near side is the wide side, but maybe look for Smith to roll out to the left now and find one of his receivers open in the flat. And I tell you, Rick, Will Matthews has done a very nice job of finding himself open uh, in both man coverage and in zone this evening. And Smith to Matthews. Matthews has been his favorite target all night. Big third down and 15. You can't afford a mistake here. Out of the eye of the work. Three-step drop. Smith looking one-on-one. -on -one. Matthews is out there, and he got tackled by the cornerback, and they're not throwing a flag. Are you kidding me? Mahaso grabbed Matthews' jersey and brought him down right in front of the Blacksburg bench, and there was no flag thrown at the 32-yard line, or that would have been a touchdown, and you had two officials right there, and neither one pulled out their flag, and that's a horrible no-call by this officiating crew. Well, we called it, though. We said that he would go to his uh, main receiver, Will Matthews, and Matthews found himself behind the defender. He was there, but was tackled before the football got Literally. there. Literally. And now Blacksburg has to punt. Mm. Minute 22 to go. That's unbelievable. Flincham at the 40-yard line. Talmadge has a chance to get a good effort here. High snap. He goes up to get it. And it's a high, beautiful kick. Fair catch being called for. Now the ball is going to be allowed to drop at the 20-yard line. That's where Hidden Valley will take over as Goins let it go. So the Bruins defense will saunter back out onto the field. The offense should still have the football. Or maybe we'd be lining up for an extra point because Daniel laid it up there beautifully. I mean, it was a perfect looking throw. And Matthews would have had it. And Smith just kind of lofted it in this crisp air now in this late October evening. And well, Mahaso just flat out tackled Matthews, and the officials there would not make a call. Salem has surged back to lead K Spring 21 14, and Pulaski County drubbing Christiansburg 35 to 7 across the way. And they're moving again, man oh man. Tell you what, that Hidden Valley game in Dublin may have been the worst nightmare for <laughs> the region with Pulaski County coming up. Minute 14 to go, 12 nothing Blacksburg. I formation, Coyer is Mahalso, the man who got away with 
well, crime here on the near sideline. That was a mugging. That was assault, but no flag was thrown, and that's a nice run up the middle by Greenway for about seven yards to the 27-yard line. Walters and Williams combined to make the stop for the Bruins. Well, Rick, here in this third quarter, Greenway's carried the ball five times, King once, and Corrier twice. That says a lot about the lack of offensive possession that the Titans have had here. Good point. During this third quarter. Control the football. Of course, Jimmy King's still not back out there. He started the second half with a great kick. His first carry went down, and he's still hurt. Two receivers out to the left. Eye formation. A handoff goes. There's the first down. Greenway again will take the football to about the 33-yard line. Joe Turley knocked him down. 31 seconds to go in the third. Running out of time here with one quarter to go. Blacksburg up 12 to nothing. Defense is fired up. Boy, Joe Turley just brings so much life out onto the field, huh? It's like that high ankle sprain's holding up pretty well for the young man. So far, still 12 minutes and a little bit more left to go in this football game. And very slick out there as the dew starts to settle in here on this Friday evening. Now we have a timeout across the way. Official, for some reason, on the far sideline is walking over toward the band area. The Hidden Valley Band area. I don't know what's going on over there. 23 seconds. Why well, is the official talking to somebody on the other side of the fence? Something may have, well, the something band. about the band playing during the game action or something? That could be one possibility. Not sure what that was all about. May have been. Now he's going to talk to, well, it looked like he was going to talk to J.R. Edwards. Well, the official across the way, the side judge went over to talk to somebody across the fence. I think it was the band director. I'm not sure. He's still standing over there, halting play. And now they're telling the teams to get back in their huddles. I'm not real sure what this is all about. And after that no call on the mugging of Matthews, you don't really want to give this crew the benefit of the doubt now, huh? That's right. But we'll see. Now the official rolls his arm. We're ready to play. And now that same side judge is stopping play again. What in the world is going on? I think the clock started. And this may now be a situation where they have to reset the clock. As the referee comes forward. 34-yard line. First down. Looks like they're going to put some time back on the clock maybe. 31 seconds, 31 seconds back on the clock. And Dave Press, the Blacksburg coach, just took care of it. He held up a three and a one. There you go. That's simple. That's simple, guys. Okay, officials, get back to the game. Just let Coach Chris take care of it. 31 seconds now. Now we're going to be allowed to play, I believe. No more sideline distraction. High formation. That was strange. There's a handoff Greenway. Got hit at the line. And to his credit, will bulldog his way ahead for a couple. Woods got back there, but I believe, was it Sean Bennett? Nope, it was Drumheller. Second down and eight, and that'll be the final play of our third quarter. Blacksburg trying to end a six-game losing streak. Still has that 12-0 lead they took into the locker room. Fourth quarter action set to begin from Bill Brown Stadium. We come back. You're listening to Bruins football here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. Oh, come on. Hey, uh... Hey, amigo. Hey, I asked you for whole wheat bread. El Weedo. Sorry for the confusion. You know, that's the problem with these people. If you want to serve Americans, you got to learn to speak the language. You know what I'm saying? No, sir. I don't. Imagine the power of one voice. Click freedomcenter.org to find yours. Fourth quarter action set to begin from right to left now. Hidden Valley will have the football, second down and eight. Coming up from the 36. Rick Watson, Jerry Massey with you. 12 nothing's our score. Coming up on our Chase Home Finance postgame show, Jerry will talk with Coach Chris. We'll have all the numbers for you, preview the game again next week, and get as many scores to you as we can. Again, Pulaski drubbing Christiansburg 35-7 right now. And Salem has come back. They were down 14. They scored 21 in a row to lead Cave Spring late in the third, 21-14. Heading into the fourth, Glenver leading Radford 21-0. And uh, Christiansburg on the Pulaski County two-yard line trying to drive and score. Wow. Yeah. Up to the minute, Jerry Massey. You got to love it. 
He's got you got sources out there, don't you? Yes, I do. I got I got feelers throughout the NRV. You got your own peeps out there. Out of the eye, they will work to begin the fourth and final quarter. Two receivers to the right side, Ray and Greenway, will be lined up in the eye behind Coyer. Five man front employed by the Bruins. There's the snap, the roll by Coyer. is going to turn it up and be dragged down a yard behind the line. Williams was there, but it was Matt Woods who got him by the shoe tops. It's third down and nine. Don't forget, we'll be naming our Hardy's player of the game at the conclusion of tonight's contest as well. Coyer telegraphed that one all the way, Rick. It was a run to the right side. It was designed to go that way, but Coyer, if he runs that play more horizontal and he stretches it out, makes Blacksburg think it's a pass, then he's able to maybe try to get rid of the football to try to come up with a big play. Now he faces a third and a definite passing situation. High formation. The receivers now lined up to the left side of the field. Boyer takes the snap, five-step drop. He's looking left, lost his pass high. It's going to be too far out of the reach. Intended for Mahasso. Double coverage on the play by Sims and Turley. Fourth down, and now I was going to see maybe at this point of the game, would he go ahead and go for it? Nothing doing. He's going to bring his punting unit out with Coach Edwards. And the Bruins' defense has been dominating here tonight. And this is an offense, again, folks, that put up 31 against Pulaski two weeks ago. It's baffling, really. I know they don't have Judd Cart or the King kid's been hurt, but you give all the credit to this Blacksburg defense. You know, sports can be funny sometimes, right? It's, you know? it's insane. It really is. Just like the Tech game last night. I mean, Tech 25 points in the final six minutes to beat the Yellow Jackets. A timeout on the field. Let's go ahead and step out and take it as well. 11-12 to go. 12 nothing. Bruins. We're back with more after this here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. Well, hello. There's nothing more rewarding than helping a kid. Now, a few observations. Imaginary friends, now you see them. Now you don't. Not all hidden talents are socially acceptable. Be conscious of size differences. Moments like these happen every day. Lend your support. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org. Until next time. Alongside Jerry Massey, I'm Rick Watson. Welcome back to Bill Brown Stadium. Tyler Holmes will go deep to receive this kick off the foot of Alex Ray. And boy, coaches are just beaming about this kid, aren't they? Tyler Holmes, the freshman, talking with Coach Phipps. He just kind of smiled and talked about his potential. There's a lot of talent coming through this program at the lower levels, and Ray's going to keep it away from him. He's going to bounce at the 35 and roll inside the 30. Pretty good effort there by Ray. And Blacksburg will be pinned back to their 28-yard line, but now the goal is to run as much time as you can. You get a touchdown, that's great, but get some first downs, run some clock. You have to punt it back. You entrust it to this defense. It's been so splendid here. 37-yard punt puts Blacksburg inside the 30, Rick, and if you are the Bruins, you're exactly right. You want to run some clock off, and uh, remember the scoring drive, the, the second of the two scoring drives for the Bruins, five minutes, one second. Now, last week against Pulaski County, without scoring, the Bruins had a five-and-a-half-minute uh, drive, which that's how much time that, uh, that, were, that was eight, eight off the clock there. So the Bruins capable of doing the things necessary to, to shorten this game. Have to be very, very patient, though. And shortening the game is something Coach Chris is very, very accustomed to. He has to do it. Here's Bennett, the fullback. Again, a little dive play that gets a yard, second down and nine. Matthews made the stop. Let's keep track of this. There were just over 11 minutes when this thing started. We're at the 10.45 mark. Bruins will use up all the play clock. Smith comes over to the sideline, wipes off his hands with a towel, and gets the play call from Coach Chris. As you see, the big number two being held by the student section, a member of the student section below. And it's taken away by someone else. I guess that's representing, hopefully, uh, victory number two here tonight. That's right. For the Bruins on the season. I formation. Oh, they're going to throw it. This going to roll out. He's looking. He's got two receivers open, and it's Matthews. Man, oh, man, what a great pattern as he's wrestled out of bounds. Well, not before he carries ahead three yards beyond the marker out to, well, just about the 42-yard line. Let's see where they spot this thing. 43-yard line. Good job. And, boy, that was a nice rollout. Well designed play by Coach Chris. Nice job there by Matthews. Once again, finding his place in the Hidden Valley secondary. Just settles down. He doesn't panic. He doesn't try to run around. He gets open. He stays there. And he allows Smith to find him. And Blacksburg 
to continue the drive. Two receivers split to the left for first down. That's a good way to keep the clock moving, huh? Just throw the ball, move the sticks, let's see if they run it here. Out of the eye, they'll work. They're going to hand it off to Woods, and that's a great tackle up the field. That was Matthews. Man, I'll tell you what, Greg Matthews has been playing on the defensive line. He's been playing some linebacker. He shot through that time for the tackle, and it's going to be a loss of about five on the play. Back to the 39-yard line. Blacksburg running to the wide side of the field there. Just penetrated that line of scrimmage and brought Woods down. Now another second to long situation. 9.45 to go. Two receivers out to the left. Backs are in the eye. Bennett and Woods. Smith brings them set. Calls out the signals. They're going to throw again. Five-step drop. Middle of the field. He's looking. Grant was there, and there were five white jerseys there. Fortunately, it wasn't picked as the pass was high. Third down and 15. Takes some doing to overthrow Aubrey Grant because he is 6'4". Quintuple coverage there, Rick. You had three receivers go out. You had Grant in the middle, and you had two on the far side. But Smith predetermined who he was going to throw the football to and therefore was able to go for his receiver. Unfortunately, it was a bit high. And of course, it's third down and long, and the clock has stopped. Timmy Plemons brings in the play for third down and 15, 9.33 to go. A shotgun formation by Daniel Smith. He'll be back at his 35, an eye formation. Or check that, you got flanked uh, out there by Bennett and Woods. Hard to be in the eye from shotgun. Here's Smith. Oh, my goodness, Matthews just sits down right at the marker, and he carries ahead for another first down to the 43. They needed 15. They got 19. Is, I don't know if that was blown coverage or not, but Woods kind of separated himself across the way, and then Matthews spotted open, and boom. Smith found him. He's throwing the ball very well tonight. It was the same exact play that he was just uh, Smith connected to Matthews with. The thing is, it was on the opposite side of the field. Matthews ran the same exact route. It was just a curl pattern outside, settled down within the zone. Hidden Valley gave him a lot of room, and Blacksburg able to pick up another first down. And fortunately for Blacksburg, the play was ruled inbound, so the clock's running. We're toward nine minutes now. Two receivers to the near side. They hand it off on first down to Matt Woods. They spread him out, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Pursued up front by that freshman linebacker, Corey Sloan. And it's going to be second down and 10. The ball right at the 43-yard line of Hidden Valley. 8.45 to go. Still 12-0 Bruins looking for their second win of the year and looking to end this six-game losing streak. Almost the same series of plays going on right now, Rick. You had the big completion from Smith to Matthews, and then you run Woods on the following down, which is first. So it's now second and just over 10 yards. Blacksburg may run the football once again and then put it in the hands of Smith to try to complete another third down pass. This is exactly what Coach Chris wanted out of this possession. They're going to throw it on second down. Smith is flushed and just throws it away, and that might be intentional grounding. No flag has been thrown. It's going to be third down. Smith was chased out about 12 yards from the pocket and just threw the ball really into the ground about 10 yards up the field. I think the Bruins may have gotten a break there. I think so. And, and he really didn't get outside the tackles. And the ball did not make it back to the line of scrimmage. So double whammy there. But Blacksburg gets a reprieve. Still third and 10 yards to go. But they're extending this game. Plays going out of bounds. Incomplete passes. Still giving that Hidden Valley offense just a glimmer of hope. They have all three of their timeouts left to the Titans. Blacksburg out of timeout. Shotgun this time, third and ten. Smith's been accurate on third down. Lost his pass near side. Plemons got turned around. Couldn't come up with it at the 23. So, Hidden Valley holds. As Jerry mentioned, another incomplete pass. Clock is stopped with 8-11. Need a good effort here by Fletcham. We'll see if Hidden Valley comes after the kick. Goins will retreat back inside his 10. Blacksburg only able to run off about three minutes there, Rick. Another first down would have been really nice there. You know, you could have got it down to about the six-minute mark if you had to turn it back over to this very potent Hidden Valley attack. But so far, the Bruins have had the answer defensively. If nothing else, though, you gained yourself some field position. Maybe trap Hidden Valley back, make them work, and get more time off. They want to try to drive on you. Low snap. Boy, what a great job by Flincham to field it. And then what a beautiful spiral off his right foot. And the ball's going to bound. Out of bounds. Oh, it's a touchback. It went just... Outside of the pylon, he nearly pinned him deep inside the one. That was a terrific play by Talmadge Flincham, who had to field it. It looked like a shortstop picking it up and throwing over to first. Instead, he 
booted it out of there inside the one, but it just went outside the pylon. And now you have a 20-yard first down situation coming up for Hidden Valley, 80-yard field. We'll see what the Blacksburg defense can do now. I love the effort there by Fletcher. I mean, he just hung the football up, and either way you look at it, the ball is either going to go out of bounds or if it was going to be able to, uh, to be fielded, Blacksburg's coverage team would have been down there in time to, to, to make a play. Coyer in the shotgun. Takes the snap. He's looking to throw it in the near flat. He does. Ball is caught very nicely by Chris Leonard. And Leonard's going to be pushed out of bounds here on the near sideline, very close to a first down. Looks like he'll have it right at the 30-yard line. Ten-yard throw and catch there from Coyer to Leonard. Leonard's first catch on the evening. 70-yard run by Matt Woods. First play of the game. Then a one-yard run by Matt Woods. That's where we are right now. 12-0 as the two-point conversion failed. Blacksburg defense has been unbelievable. Receiver to each side of the field. Coyer going to be in the shotgun. They call it about a half-yard shot. Second out. Coyer takes the snap. He's looking to throw it. He's flushed out by Walker, and he's going to be sacked. He's sacked back at the 22-yard line. A loss of seven on the play. Jared Walters has played a terrific game tonight, and he just outran Coyer to the spot and got him down. What power there by Walters. He just brought him down very, very easily. And now another third and about eight situation for Hidden Valley, and they call their first time out of the half. And as they take one, we will as well. 7.37 to go, 12 nothing Bruins. We're back with more after this. You're listening to Blacksburg Football here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. down and nine, 7.37 to go. Coyer in the gun, takes the snap. He's looking to throw it near side, now changes his mind, goes across the field, and it's dropped. It's dropped here on the near sideline by Bush, who's covered on the play by Turley. And now it's going to be fourth down and nine. And it looks like this time the offense will stay out onto the field. 7.31 to go. No choice here, I don't guess, if you're J.R. Edwards. You might as well leave him out there. And take a shot on fourth down because you have to feel like you won't get the ball back with enough time to try to get two scores. So here you go. This could be the ball game. Shotgun, Coyer. Fourth down and a full nine. Ball's at the 21. He takes the snap. Fourth down play. He's looking to run. Bounces off a tackle, looking to get to the sticks, and it's going to be very close. If you got across the 30, he was able to move them. Couldn't tell where the spot was, Jerry, here on the near sideline. You're shaking your head no. He's going to be about two yards short. So he didn't get there, and he kind of just ran out of bounds, and he was short, didn't get to the line, so Blacksburg holds. That was a curious play by the quarterback, Coyer, who kind of took himself out of bounds. Short of the first down, so now Blacksburg has it at the 28. Quarterback speed draw to the short side of the field on fourth and nine. Yowzers, <laughs> and Blacksburg <laughs> will have the football inside the 30-yard line, 7.24 left to go on the fourth, and Coyer, not really been used to the best of his ability as far as being a pocket passer and finding his receivers on the evening. He's only completed four passes. He's something of 4 of 11 on the night, two interceptions, and also a fumble. Single back is Bennett, two receivers to each side of the field. They're going to throw it on first down. Nope, they're going to hand it off. And Bennett lost the ball, but he was down. Gain of maybe a yard on the play. Greenway put him to the turf. It's going to be second down and nine from the 28 coming up for Blacksburg. So this is what you do if you're Blacksburg, Rick. You keep an eye on when the ball is whistled, ready to play. 
which is right now. 25 seconds. You try to utilize as much of the game clock as possible before you snap the football. I'm not taking anything away from Hidden Valley, but after watching them tonight, even without Judd Cart, Jimmy King's been hurt. How in the world do they go up and beat Pulaski 31-6 in double? I mean, it just shows you how you better not take anything for granted in the River Ridge District. It's a crapshoot almost every night. Two receivers out to the left, second out and nine. Toss play to the near side. This is Woods. Nice cut, but it's going to be a holding call against Blacksburg. It's, look at Matt. He's going to fight ahead and get a first down to the 16, but it's going to be waved off. You can cancel out a very strong 11-yard run. Holding call against Blacksburg will bring it back. Yeah, we can see it from up here. Aubrey Grant, guilty party on the near side. Just, it's a pancake block, but he had his hands outside the shoulders, and that's too much big syrup, no -no. Huh? Yeah, too much syrup. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So instead of a did, first did down. Did you say Yowzers earlier, by the way? Yes. Hmm. Zoinks. Zoinks, Scooby. Was that, wasn't that Shaggy that said Zoinks? Uh, I think so. Happy Halloween, man. Happy Halloween. You, Happy you, early you, birthday. Well, thank you very much. Looking forward to it. By the way, that's the first penalty of the night on Blacksburg. Well, that's a good time, you know. Wait till the six-minute mark of the game before you have your first infraction. Coach Chris will take that every time. He'd rather have none, of course, but that's hard to do. I'll tell you somebody who's played great tonight is Chris Ryder, the center. He's done a good job. Here's Bennett. He got two wings on the left side. The two receivers line up as wing back, and it's going to be Bennett keeping it between the tackles. Got him spin away and protect that football. Gets a yard. That was second and 19. No desire there, but just to keep the clock running, get as much as you can. Third and 18. It was another good-looking freshman, Corey Sloan, making another tackle for Hidden Valley. He's had a pretty good night. Yes, he has, a linebacker. Again, they started a freshman at backer last year, Alex Ray, who is now a sophomore and arguably their best defensive player. Their two linebackers are their best two defenders, Greenway and Alex Ray. And this is a program, Rick, that will only get stronger and stronger in Division Three, especially in a growing area of Roanoke County. Third-year school competing for a playoff berth. What can you say? Trying to get their first win against Blacksburg in three tries. Here's Smith, three-step drop, going far sideline. Good throw and catch. Matthews inside the 10, takes it down to the five. Touchdown save and tackle by Mahalso. It's a gain of 33. What a great throw by Daniel Smith on the inside shoulder of Matthews. He made a nice catch. And I'll tell you what, Daniel Smith is having his best night by far throwing the football. Four completions here in the second half to go along with four completions in the first half. And what can you say about that picture-perfect pass on the outside shoulder of Matthews? Man. Led him perfectly to the outside, and the Bruins are knocking on the door with five minutes left. High formation. Bruins trying to put it away here. 12-0. They're going to hand it off to Woods. Right tackle. He cuts back middle of the field. He's in the end zone. He has the hat trick. Officially a six-yard touchdown run, and he can put six more on the board for the Royal Blue and Gold. Matt Woods' third touchdown makes it 18 to nothing. Woods starts right, cuts it back to his left, ended up going straight up the gut. Clear sailing, untouched into the end zone for the score. And now you bring out Matthews. Let's see how that foot's doing. Daniel Smith will hold the extra point try. What a huge, huge effort tonight by Blacksburg. Snap was high, Smith got it down, and this extra point is up and good. 4.53 to go, the Bruins extend their lead to 19 to nothing. We're back with more from Bill Brown after this. You're listening to Blacksburg Bruins football. Every day, online predators make their way into homes uninvited and unnoticed. Help delete online predators. To learn what you can do to protect your kids' online life, visit CyberTipline.com. Will Matthews is going to kick it back now to the Titans, and it's a low-line drive going to be caught by the up man Leonard to the 30, 35-yard line. He's tackled there by Matthews, the kicker, who got down the field to sling him down. Jerry, it was a... Four play drive, 29 yards, 231 off the clock, and the Bruins, after their defense held on fourth down, converted into seven points to lead 19 0. 
So that means after the, uh, the big mistake there by Hidden Valley, Blacksburg has cheered up a little over five and a half minutes of this fourth quarter clock. Wow. Just unbelievable. It's just, it's just the reward for how hard these kids keep playing and showing up every day in practice. Coach Chris said it was their best week of practice all year. Here's a nice throw and catch, Coyer. And he got laid out by Nick Green. But Bush hung on, 11-yard pickup at the 47-yard line. They're going to place it first down in 10, make it the 48. Is now they're going to go no huddle, trying to conserve as much time as possible. Shotgun by Coyer. Takes the snap. He's looking. He's looking. He's got happy feet. Jonathan Howard's going to bring him down, but Coyer gets the ball out of there to avoid the sack, and now a late flag comes in. Will this be intentional grounding? It looks like it will be because there was nobody over there but the Hidden Valley sideline. The officials are conferring. I guess they want to discuss whether the ball got past the line of scrimmage. He may pick up the flag and wave it off now as he got confirmation from the side judge. And there's no flag. Well, you know, he just wanted a little bit of exercise. Wanted to get his laundry out and say that he actually threw it. That's right. That's all. Wave his little flag. Start the Halloween parade here tonight. 4.23 to go. Second and 10 from 48. I'm surprised I'm not seeing many people dressed up tonight. You figure? And it's true. I wonder, if was a, I wonder if that was a school rule or something. Yeah, I thought we'd see some costumes out tonight. Coyer takes the snap on second and 10. He's got a receiver wide open, and it's intercepted by Sims, his second one of the night. Bush thought he had it and had a touchdown at the 25, and Sims just playing center field back there, stood his ground and was very disciplined, jumped up high in the air and picked it off, his second pick, and turnover number six against Hidden Valley. And pick off number three for Coyer. That's right, three interceptions for this young man. What a play by Sims. Going straight up for the football, showing some vertical, and now Blacksburg, 4.15 left, and they're in a pretty good position right now to run this clock out because Hitton Valley, well, they really haven't been able to get anything done, not only the entire game, but especially in the fourth quarter. I think the, free, uh, the streak is now officially over. Here's John Cook, the sophomore quarterback, and he hands off to Gregory. He's got a seam, 10, 15, 20 yards. Near the 50, takes it out to the 48, 21 yards on the carry. Kevin Gregory, his best effort of the season from the line of scrimmage, and they just exploded. There's some different players into the game, some new players, because you can tell because it is a muddy field here. And guys with the shiny white pants haven't been in yet. But the sophomore, John Cook, of course, had to start a game when Daniel Smith was injured against Northside. Now we have an official's timeout as they're going to allow Gregory to tie his shoe. Sophomore getting a lot more experience here tonight in cleanup time. Up 19 nothing with four minutes to go. And good for Kevin Gregory as well because his initial carry on the evening resulted in a fumble, which Hidden Valley recovered. So good job by Coach Dave Chris getting Gregory back in there with some more carries, get his confidence back up. Robert Jennings back in. Missed last week, had an injury. Nice to see the sophomore fullback back in action tonight. These players, you know, we said it all along during the streak. Stick behind them. They don't quit. They haven't quit on themselves. They give great effort. The coaches are so impressed with how hard they play. And they're going to be rewarded here tonight with a much-needed victory for this football team, but especially for this senior class and all the kids who have fallen due to injury. Here's Jennings carrying for a two-yard loss. Ray in on the stop for Hidden Valley. 3.30 to go. And just a matter now, getting the final seconds off the board, the Bruins are going to improve to 2-6 and six with a trip to Salem coming up next Friday. Another first down. Well, uh, need the Blacksburg can run the football down to under the one-minute mark. And Hidden Valley, although they will lose this game, not necessarily out of the race. Region 3, Division 3, Jerry, we're talking about three of the top four teams coming in. We're out of the River Ridge. And Jennings fell down, and he's going to be swamped under now. He's going to lose about five more yards to the 42. Robert just lost his footing. And, again, it's kind of treacherous out there. This field got eaten up last week. Hidden Valley is going to take a timeout with 2.55 to go. And now we'll go ahead and take one as well. 2.55 to go. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Stay with us. Don't go away. You're tuned to Blacksburg Bruins football here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. Hi, 
Being there for kids is super good fun. All it takes is a little know-how. Curiosity. The key to a lifetime of discovery. Kids will go to mighty great lengths to impress you. Kids know what's cool. Good thing you don't have to. Moments like these happen every day. Lend your support. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org. Until next time. After the timeout, Blacksburg breaks the huddle. Third down and 15 coming up, 2.55 to go. Hidden Valley can only stop the clock one more time. Blacksburg's going to run it straight up the middle with the fullback. And that is Jason Pritchard, Jr., 5'7", 160 pounds. And there's going to be the final timeout called by Hidden Valley. We will keep it right here with 2.46 to go. A lot to do on the post game. We're going to have Coach Chris. We'll name our Hardy's player of the game. Have all the scores of other games. And we'll talk a little bit about next Friday night. We're going to be heading down to Salem to take on the Spartans. 7 o'clock pregame, 7.30 to kick Blacksburg and Salem. Been a long time coming, Jerry Massey, since opening night. Blacksburg has lost six straight games. And he had a couple off weeks in there. You're looking at two solid months without a victory. Two months, two days? Unbelievable. Seems like forever. It has been. Tell you what, Coach Chris is going to be the most relieved guy in the world. And Big it's, win, yeah. You can just attribute it to these, these kids. This is a special group. It really is. And um, they're playing hard, and they're going to be rewarded here tonight. And they felt like they were going to get this. When you talk to Coach Phipps, you know, his team felt good. And he was right. He was prophetic. Every down. Every down. come out. And – doesn't matter if you know they're hurt. Yeah, that's one thing about the Blacksburg team. At least I've encountered in the three weeks that I've been with the program on the yeah. on the network yeah. here. It's just that they play hard every down. Don't really take a down off. Very very aggressive, and good kids. Very good kids. There'll be a lot of Blacksburg folks going to watch this game on WTOB Channel Two Monday at seven and Wednesday at seven thirty. Is the punt was shanked by Talmadge Flincham and. Touched ahead by Scott McKee. So good field position for Hidden Valley. 2.36 to go. An eight-yard net punt by Talmadge Flincher. Hey, he was due a bad one, right? He hadn't hit a bad one since he took over the job for Josh Sales. So now, first down coming up for Hidden Valley. They have the football at the 49. Down 19. Where exactly is the Valley hidden? Do we know? That I am not aware of. Okay. Receiver each side of the field. Shotgun by Coyer at his 44. Takes the snap. He's looking down the middle. Now looks left. He's flush. He's going to run it. Across the 50 to the 45. And he's going to be pushed back and out of bounds there. Jared Rowland made the hit. Gain of about four on the play. Second down and six. He stopped the clock. A smart play by the junior quarterback. Got another year coming next year. A lot of these players back for Hidden Valley. Well, whoever hit the Valley... You know, did not do a good job of it because we found it right. on our way to Dwight Bogle yes, Stadium. Yes, we did. Two weeks ago. We got we got pretty confused, didn't we? Y yeah. Yeah. You were driving. Well, yeah, it was my fault. I take full responsibility. We passed K Spring High School and found out, of course, that the stadium wasn't at the high school. It's at the middle school. Then we passed Hidden Valley and thought, well, maybe we need to go there because they share the same building, you know. Here's a shotgun snap, a high snap. Boyer can run it, and he's going to stop, throw across the field, and wide open is Matthews. He's going to have a first down. Big hit put up front by Worley. Going to spot it at the 35-yard line, a 12-yard pickup. Good decision that time by Coyer. They're just trying to get that goose egg off the score with 2.17 to go. 19-0 Bruins. Shutting out the team that put 31 on the board against Pulaski County two weeks ago. Pulaski shut out Blacksburg last week, 27-0. The snap went over the head of Coyer. He did well just to regain and then found Matthews across the way. He couldn't hang on. He got hit by Bibbins and Walters. It's going to be second down and 10, 2.04 to go. Jerry going to head on down and get his place on the field, talk with Coach Chris. He'll be very, very happy head football coach of the Blacksburg team here tonight. Jeremiah indeed was a bullfrog. He was wearing Blacksburg colors tonight. We're on this Friday before Halloween. Mahasso out to the right. Near side will be going. Shotgun again for second down and 10 from the Blacksburg 35. Boyer looking to pick out a receiver. Now he feels the pressure, eludes it, runs right. He's going to turn it up and get cut down in the open field by Bivens, who's made a couple of nice plays. Gain of two. Clock will keep running. A minute 45 to go. That was a nice play by Bibbins. 
5'6 junior coming into the game. A lot of the Blacksburg Reserve. They don't have many players in reserve because most of these guys play all the time because of all the injuries. The guys have had to grow up quickly this year. On the job. There's your snap to Coyer out of the gun for third and eight. Now he's going to run left, break a tackle, still going, being chased down from behind, and Nick Green will put him down. He's being pursued by Robert Jennings. They're going to spot it about a yard and a half shy of the first down with a minute 16 to go. Hidden Valley can't stop the clock. It's going to bring up a fourth down for the Titans here. And one more snap. Their last shot. They don't get up the first down here to get the goose egg out of the scoring column. High snap over the head of Coyer. He's absolutely exhausted as he goes back and just falls on it. Blacksburg will take over at the 42-yard line. And Coyer, boy, that kid has just played his guts out here tonight. You could just tell the way he went back for the ball. He had nothing left but just to go back and cover it up. And the Blacksburg Bruins are going to pitch a shutout here tonight. 54 seconds. And I hope this crowd gives them a standing ovation that they deserve. This is going to alleviate a lot of the frustration and pain emotionally and physically that has been exerted onto this team here in 2004 after last year winning the River Ridge District. Having such a great season, a lot of uncertainty coming in. The one thing they couldn't have was injuries, and that's what has really devastated this team since really the second game of the season. But tonight they put all that aside. And they're going to get a big win here at Bill Brown Stadium. A couple snaps, and this one will be in the books. Stay tuned. Coming up, we'll have a conversation with Coach Chris. Jerry might have a couple special guests as well to join him for the postgame festivities. John Cook, the sophomore quarterback, will bring him out. He's just going to take a knee. One more snap, and we'll officially be done here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium. Terrific, terrific effort by the Bruins. They will go to two and six, get their first district victory of the season. They go to one and two. Hidden Valley now five and three, and they've lost two consecutive district contests after opening up with that win against Pulaski a couple weeks ago. 30 seconds. And this will do it here tonight from Bill Brown as Cook will go under center one final time. And this is a terrific win for these kids. My goodness. You know you're not going to play in the postseason. You're playing for pride. And these kids have every right to enjoy this one here tonight. The Blacksburg Bruins have ended a six-game losing streak. Final score, Blacksburg 19, Hidden Valley nothing. Let's take a break. We'll come back and begin our post-game coverage after this here on Super Talk 101. You'll never have to stop and ask for directions. And you'll be helping a busload of people. And when you pass by, everyone will stop and take notice. If you are at least 20 years of age, have a good driving record, and are interested in working for the best transit system in Virginia, visit our website at www.vtransit.org or give us a call at 961-1185. Blackfoot Transit, we're your bus line. Blacksburg wins at 19 to nothing. Let's go straight down to the field. Jerry Massey's got Dave Chris. All right, thanks a lot, Rick. Coach Chris, 19 nothing. Your defense pitches a goose egg. Matt Woods runs for the hat trick. Three touchdowns on the evening. Well, you know, we do well when we play as one. And uh, we kind of talked about that this week. We talked about, you know, a change in attitude, uh, you know, just you know, stay good sports, play within the rules of the game. But, uh, you know, know that we can can get things done, you know, together and you know, win the individual battles and win the individual battles and the team's going to win. And I, I thought that defensively that goal line stand uh, kind of really turned things around for us, I think, attitude wise. And then the offense drove it out from back there, uh, you know, about the 30 yard line before we had to give it up. But they just, you know, all, all of them just they prepared hard during the week and they Despite all the things that have gone wrong, they've kept their focus and, and never lost heart. And uh, I, that's just, again, that's one of the characteristics of this group. You know, they don't lose heart, and, and they don't give up. They don't give in. Coach, speaking of heart, Joe Turley returns tonight off of a high ankle sprain. Immediately his impact is felt on the defensive side of the football, which forced six Hidden Valley turnovers. Well, you know, Joe's experience, he's a four-year starter. 
And, you, you know, anytime you lose that four-year starter, you know, like we did for him for three weeks, is, you know, he, he compliments everybody else so well. So it was nice to have him back. It was nice to have his leadership back also. Coach Daniel Smith to Will Matthews. That was the key connection in the passing game tonight. Matthews coming up with some nice catches, and Smith finding him uh, wide open in the flat many times. Well, Will runs great routes, and if we can give Daniel enough protection, uh, you know, he'll find, uh, you know, whoever the open receiver happens to be tonight, it was Will. Uh, you know, he made some great catches, and he got some yards after his catches, and uh, I was teasing a little bit about getting caught down there right before he scored, so. But he did. He ran great routes. He, he knows how to set people up. Um, and he's, he's just a really good football player. Coach, first win in two months, in over two months for your program. You have to savor this one. And uh, how big is this considering how hard these players have worked in practice day in and day out and have you know, battled through the, the injuries of other teammates? Well, to them, it's real big. Um, you, know, you know, finally they see some rewards for all the efforts that they put in. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, we were working hard and playing hard, but weren't seeing, seeing any rewards. And hats off to, to the kids because they never quit believing, you know, and, and then all the other things that we've said about them too. So, you know, it, it's, it's for them. You know. okay, we just, coach. We're just along for the ride. Okay, Coach, next up next week, a trip to Salem Stadium to take on the Salem Spartans. What will you tell your team here momentarily to get them fired up for that one? Well, I don't want them fired up tonight. Uh, I want them to, to enjoy this, this feeling, and uh, we'll start, they'll start worrying about Salem on Monday. You know, the staff will start preparing on Sunday for them, but uh, they, deserve, they deserve to enjoy this good feeling for a while. Okay, Coach, congratulations, and best of luck to you next week at Salem. Thanks, Jerry. All right, Rick, we're going to try to round up some players. Uh, we'll be right back down here. Let's go back upstairs. All right. Thanks a lot, Jerry Massey. Good job there with Coach. He's going to talk to his team, and we'll try to see if we can hear from a couple of the particulars here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium. And while we do that, let me run you down on the starting lineups here. Again, 19-0 the final score, starting lineups, uh, final stats. How about that? 13-9 first downs, Blacksburg outdistancing the Hidden Valley team. 170 on the ground tonight. We mentioned the troubles. Blacksburg having all sorts of problems keeping teams from running on them. Being outgained 199-02 tonight. Blacksburg wins that battle 170-02, 145 passing yards. Blacksburg, 315 total yards, just 185 for Hidden Valley. Matt Woods, 15 carries, 91 yards, had the three touchdowns, the hat trick. Sean Bennett, 12 for 48. Kevin Gregory, 2 for 21. Daniel Smith, 2 carries for 20 yards. Hidden Valley, Matt Greenway, 13 for 57. Jimmy King, 5 for 22. Remember, Jimmy was injured, came back, got hurt again. Kid showed a lot of guts. Alex Ray, three carries for 19 yards. Tyler Corey, the quarterback, 15 carries for four yards. Receiving for Blacksburg, Will Matthews, as Jerry mentioned there with Coach Chris, six catches for 96 yards. Grant Sims had one huge catch for 27. DeSalvo, one for 22. Brian Bush, three catches for 44 yards. Greg Matthews, Jimmy King, Chris Leonard, all one catch apiece. Matthews for 12 yards. King for 11. Leonard for nine. How much Flincham, six, uh, six punts. Average 30 and a half yards. Alex Ray, three punts for 36. Six turnovers forced by Blacksburg. Two interceptions by Grant Sims here tonight. They forced three interceptions here in the football game against Tyler Coyer. As again, Blacksburg wins this by a final score of 19 to nothing here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium. Just a terrific effort. The Bruins into six game losing streak. And Coach Chris again letting the kids have it all. I like that. Just said, look, this is all about them. We're just kind of here along for the ride. And, uh, Kids are down there celebrating, and they deserve it. They deserve to celebrate uh, here tonight from Bill Brown Stadium as they put away Hidden Valley 19 to nothing with a superlative defensive effort, and they win the football game going away, shutting out Hidden Valley. First shutout of the year for this defense. As again, the Titans came in at 5-2, and two, playing very well. Aspirations to still have a shot at winning the River Ridge. Won't happen now, but they still have a shot at the Region 3 Division 3 playoffs as tonight they get the victory by a final score of 19 to nothing. Jerry's going to get down there and try to pick up a player or two, and I believe now he's going to be standing by with the man who had three touchdowns here tonight, Matt Woods. J-Man? All right. Thanks a lot, Rick. I'm now joined by Matt Woods. Matt, you run for the hat trick tonight. Three touchdowns, 91 yards on the ground. Talk about it tonight. How does this win feel, considering it's the first win for the program in a little over two months? Yeah, it feels great. I mean, since the first week of the season, this is the first game we won, you know. 
I think it was five or six we lost. It was a big boost for the team. Everybody came out here ready to win. Everybody came out here knowing what they had to get done in order to win. Talk about that opening touchdown, 71 yards, first offensive play of the game. What was the design? And uh, tell, uh, take us through that play. It was just your average uh, 57, but the line blocked as hard as they could. They had every guy covered. Tim Plemons, my wide receiver downfield, he did a perfect block. If it wasn't for that, I would have been down right there. I mean, it was just well executed. Matt, talk about the adversity that your team has had to deal with, especially with injuries this season. Uh, that's been the toughest. Um, that's the reason I moved to tailback, because of the injury of Josh Shells. Um, and then everybody else, Herbie, Herbie Heights, number 57. And then Joe, he just got here. But it's been tough. We've had to work through it, you know, move some people around, m make some new plays and stuff. But, I mean, it worked. We came together tonight, and we, we made it done. Matt, what was the theme in practice this week in order to get your second uh, W of the season for the team? Um, we we knew what we we knew what we had lost. I know we had nothing to lose. The district was out of our hands. We just we just played our hearts out. You know that's all we could do, and we knew that. Okay, Matt. Next up for Blacksburg is a trip to Salem next uh, next Friday. I guess you're going to savor this one for for uh, for the weekend and get back to work at it on Monday. Yeah, I think this is going to be some good motivation going into Monday, picking everybody's hearts up, you know, getting a little work in. Yeah, I, th I think this is going to what we need for the rest of the season. Okay, Matt, congratulations. Three touchdowns on the night. Thank you. All right, Rick, let's go back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Jerry. Again, uh, final score here tonight, 19 to nothing. Blacksburg knocking off Hidden Valley. And before we step out, let's go ahead and back to the field. Jerry, one more time, you got another special guest. Again, you mentioned him a moment ago, Joe Turley, coming back from that high ankle sprain. That's right, Rick. Joe Turley. Joe, how is the ankle feeling? It's feeling all right. You know, I missed two games. I just came back. I heard it on the first play of the north side game, first play on defense. Just came back. You know, I was feeling it. I was ready to play. I just got out there and did what I had to do. How big is this victory for the team tonight? It's, I mean, it's a big win. It's the first game we've won since the first game of the season. I mean, we were just ready to come out here and win, you know, with all those losses. We just, we just knew we had to get it done. We had a hard week at practice did everything we were supposed to do and just came out here and capitalized in the game. You were flying around tonight defensively. Were you, uh, were you feeling good when the, uh, the whistle uh, blew and, the, and the, the hand was dropped to start the game? Uh, yes, sir. I was, ready. I was ready to go. I was ready to go. I've been waiting for two weeks sitting on the sideline watching everybody else play. I was ready to, was ready to do what I needed to do tonight. <laughs> what has been your rehabilitation uh, during your injury? Uh, just I've been getting in ice, doing rehab and stuff, get, trying, to get, trying to get it back 100%. You think you're at 100 percent now? Uh, not, not all the way 100 percent, but I'm getting there. All right. Talk yeah. about how much this uh, this win means for the team, and of course, next week a date at Salem. But of course, it's a it's a huge victory for the program, getting off of that first win of the season. Now, uh, with two victories on the 2004 campaign. Uh, you know, I mean, like I said, this is another big win after losing so many games. Uh, we're just gonna be ready to go next week against Salem. Ready to go. This win. This win's definitely going to help us out, keep us confident, ready to go. How important was this victory considering all the other, uh, other injuries that other teammates have suffered during the season? Uh, I mean, it was definitely, definitely important. We lost our starting safety. Start, uh, he also started at tailback. We lost Herbie Hypes. He started both ways on the line. I mean, I hurt my ankle. We've had all kinds of injuries. This was, it was just a great win, everybody, everybody else pulling together. Taking okay. the win. Okay, Joe, well, congratulations and best of, next, best of luck next week at Salem. Thank you. All right, Rick, those are the thoughts of Joe Turley. Let's go back upstairs to you. All right. Nice job there, Jerry. Good job. As those kids very excited as they should be, Joe Turley and Matt Wood share our Hardys player of the game here tonight from Bill Brown. We'll take one final break. We will come back, wrap things up tonight. Stay with us. Don't go away. You're in tune to Brewers football here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. Yo, what's up, baby? Want to learn some history? Check it out, check it out. We're your GED right here, guaranteed, man. Come on, check hey, it out. Hey, how you doing? Educational videos, top quality, right here. I got live learning, beautiful books inside. The National Center for Family Literacy. Yo, I got your arithmetic right here. Because you can't get your GED on the street. Call 1-877-FAMLIT1 for free learning programs like GED and family computer classes. Who needs a high school diploma, huh? The National Center for Family Literacy. The first step to a better life. All right, welcome back to uh, Bill Brown Stadium. One final time here tonight as Blacksburg knocks off the Hidden Valley Titans by a final score of 19 to nothing. Uh, we didn't get finals, but I believe Christiansburg was unable to come back and beat Pulaski, so a big win for the Cougars. So the last score we had fourth quarter, Salem was up on Cave Spring, 21-14, and Glenver 
was up big on Radford High School. Well, next week, Jerry, you and I will be traveling down the road to Salem, taking on the uh, Spartans. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock, 7.30. I like what Coach Chris said. We're not really worried about it right now. We're just going to have fun, let the kids enjoy it. They can worry about Salem on Monday. Congratulations to the kids. I mean, what an effort tonight. 19 to nothing. I mean, the defense pitches a shutout. Incredible. And uh, it's not hidden Valley multiple times, especially, as Coach Chris did mention, that big goal line stands in the one-yard line. And uh, just an absolute huge momentum boost for the Bruins and then Blacksburg for most of the fourth quarter, able to run out the clock. Therefore, cruise their second win of the season. Two and six now heading down to Salem. Please come join us. If you can't make it down, tune us in on 101.7 FM. I want to thank Jerry Massey. Great job as always, especially with the on-field interviews. Thanks. I thought it went great. Yeah, it did go good. I want to thank our engineer, Brian Brubaker. Thanks a lot, Brian. You're the best. Thank you very much. All the folks uh, here at Blacksburg High School, Coach Chris, his staff, giving us complete access to the program. Ronnie Aiken for his help. As always, on the broadcast, Warren Murphy, Athletic Director. And again, don't forget, you can watch uh, this game, the replay, coming up on uh, Channel 2 Monday night, 7 o'clock, and also on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. There'll be a lot of folks tuning in on Monday night before Monday night football. I guarantee you that. They want to see this one all over again. I want to thank Dur Lee and all their folks at Channel 2 for the great job that they do, WTOB. Again, on the air next week at 7 o'clock. Again, our final score, 19 nothing. Blacksburg wins it over Hidden Valley. For Jerry, this is Rick saying so long. Enjoy the weekend. And until next week, this has been Blacksburg Bruins High School Football here on Super Talk 101.7 FM. Have a great weekend.